trying to bring you down But for real, you might as well give up now Think you got a chance, but I don't see how Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown My life been good and bad and all around The more things I lost, the more I found One thing I taught myself to do No matter the problem, refuse to lose So, how you wanna admit you can choose If you can't take the heat, don't light the fuse See, I walk in slow and ignite the room Like fire, everything I touch I consume I'm getting up while y'all just snooze While you make breakfast, man, I'm on the move I'm the first one in and the last one out Whoever owns the place gotta drag me out I, In me I trust Yeah, I smell like success This Elon Musk, huh? Everybody wanna be like us We don't stop Cause the top just ain't enough, huh? I ain't never gay, no I ain't scamming You know black men don't blush, huh? Came here ready to fight on this night You better just run for your life You come and see what it's like Living by the rules that you write You ain't all those lavish delights Now you had no back in his sight All the little lies you recite Just makes all the savage unite Usually I'm very polite But I'ma get savage tonight We gon' let a dog be a nice Every single dog gonna bite You might think I'm wrong but I'm right Just let it get a strong appetite I'ma let it breathe just a little Give it to you strong heavy metal I don't make a sound when I strike You better just run for your life Run for your life Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ward Radio live stream. I am your host, Carden Ellis, and today I'm joined in the studio by a killer cast composed of one Kuwaku L, who's excited to be here. He uh, brought his lunch. Man, you never did look more like Arsenio, Ar- Arsenio Hall than when you started putting on the early '90s, the early '90s mustache, my man. You're uh, it's who I am. It's <laughs> it's who you are. Yeah. So anyway, uh. Uh, I'm joining the studio by Kwaku L and uh, also some people on Zoom that we're going to introduce in a second. But we are reacting to a call out that was done of us on the Mormon Stories podcast by uh, the infamous Mississippi Bishop, who resigned in a very uh, public way from the pulpit and uh, has become kind of a little bit of a mini celebrity in uh, ex Mormon, anti Mormon circles, and who has recently made some uh, claims. On the Mormon Stories podcast that I have yet to see, but have received many uh, text messages and calls regarding. And so we're going to go over them today. The person that called me was actually none other than Jackson Paul of the Stick of Joseph. What's going on, Jackson? How you doing, brother? How we doing, Cardin? We be doing. We be doing, my man. And here to supervise the uh, supervise. The activities to make sure uh, everything goes well is none other than the ward clerk of the ward librarian, Jonah Barnes. Jonah Barnes. Well, what up, there? what up, everybody? Behave yourselves, behave yourselves. Yes, exactly. And uh, we're going to start things out with a nice super chat from L. Marie. She says, I watched this episode and realized I had paid uh, tithes to profit to Lynn in doing so should i repent perhaps shower and scrub my brain aggressively asking for a friend guys i almost died everyone be sad uh okay she i watched this episode and realized i had paid tithes she watched to pro- she watched the mormon stories episode with the mississippi bishop and needs to scrub her brain afterwards oh i get what she's saying so 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 she's saying that her viewership of the monetized channel was what actually was the tithing el marie El Marie, um, you are absolved. 
of your sin. No, I'm just kidding. It, it, that's one thing that would be really kind of cool about being a Catholic priest is just being able to walk around giving absolution. I, 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 I think I would just enjoy that. It would make me feel better about myself. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm here joined in the studio by uh, none other than Quake Uel. And um, he was first mentioned, that's all I saw, was just a very quick clip. And I thought that was really, really kind of funny that it was actually Quaker that was mentioned first. And then I was that guy. I was that guy. Oh, geez, man. By the way, I, I have a, a better... specific call out for John DeLynn this episode. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, we'll have to get to that. We'll have to get to that. So anyway, without any further ado, uh, guys, we're going to do our best to read all of your super chats. Uh, Jonah Barnes, please be the keeper of the chats and help us stay on top of things. Looks like Mary Lou has just gifted five Ward Radio memberships. To, yes, we are um, thrilled. We are thrilled to recently receive the records of Brother Mitchell, Brother Spoo uh, Spooky Micah, Nathan Bryce, Sister Mary Nauta, and Brother Jason Gast. All those who would like to welcome... Uh, Mitchell, Mike, and Nathan, Mary, and Jason into the Ward Radio Worship. Please do so by putting some W's in the chat. And we would like to thank Sister Mary Lou Holworth for her work as a Ward, uh, a Ward missionary. Nice job. All right. There's one more nice super job. chat if you could get to it before we dive right in. And Jackson has actually prepared us a bunch of timestamps here of things that he took issue with. Oh, so, right on. Right on. Um, well, PC, PC super chats and says, go Quaku. More members need to think like Jonah. No, he didn't. No, he actually yeah. said more members need to think like you. He said more mem members need to think like you, referring to Kwaku L. Heaven, oh. heaven help us. You know, I I, I agree. Uh, my friend Kwaku, he has his flaws, which I will gladly name on another podcast when he's not in the room. But he also has many strengths. And I Look, enjoy I know you guys strength. said there's no way Kwaku's going to eat his dinner on a live stream. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like <laughs> I look. We miss so many meals when I come down to film this, and I told Cardin, "It's like we keep missing meals. I'm gonna eat live. This is the consequences. You now get to look at me chewing." Uh, <laughs> that's so funny. That's it is true. I am a little bit of a taskmaster, old school Hollywood producer style. When the crew comes down, you have seen it firsthand, Jonah Barnes. It's like trying to wring as much water out of a rag as you can. It's uh, it's tough work and getting out of your talent as many shots and as, as many good takes as you can. It's like wringing that water out of a rag and you're exhausted doing it once you're done. They're exhausted once you've done it to them. But overall, I do believe that the uh, the the project is worthwhile. In fact, we're going to be having a very fun and interesting fundraiser here that hopefully will be kind of like a Ward Radio 2024 project that we're going to tease in this live stream that me and Kwaku are putting together for hopefully what is going to be a uh, feature film and some com comedic shows shorts that we're excited to talk about later on but you know first we got to respond to these super chats while we're waiting for everybody to come into the chat and then we're going yes. to respond directly to um our mississippi bishop boy who uh had a little uh little powwow with john delin yes. earlier so we catch us up on the, the super chats Yes, we have received the records for Sister Rosemarie LeMay into the ward. All those who would like to welcome Sister Rosemarie, please do so by putting a W in the chat. And also, we have received the records for... Uh, boy, there's just two... Ah, for... Oh, Brother Nathan Bigler has repented and been rebaptized into the ward. We're so thrilled to have Nathan Bigler here. Nathan also, Bigler Lord, <laughs> just became a member? <laughs> he, got, he got gifted a membership. <laughs> um, also... <laughs> That's like that's like you know the forced baptisms where they put you the they like trick you and they spray you with a fire hose and like you're baptized like wait what? Um, also, Lord uh, Kikuchio, sister, let's see, uh, brother Silver and Cyanide, good to go, and Emerald One Sixty. We have so many wonderful members that have just joined the Ward Radio Wigwam. Please welcome them by putting W's in the chat. Also, William Woodall super chats and says Jeremiah eight eight mentions the. Deuteronomists forging scriptures. Could DMT pagan gods be related to Satan's boss? Oh, well, you my. tell him you're the apocryphal. You're the associate professor of all things apocryphal, my man. Really oh quick. My. 30 second Reader's Digest version. What, what was that? Well, we have a lot of information about the Deuteronomists and how they excised the Messiah from the scriptures. One of the reasons why the Book of Mormon restores the fullness of the gospel is because it was preserved by the northern tribes and brought over by lehi and it contained prophecies of the messiah which was lost after the deuteronomists ripped it out we have a lot of info on this we could go into we won't go into it now because we want to hear from brother paul all right excellent and luke hansen says thank you jackson for getting those clips so i didn't have to you have my thanks 
So, Jackson, you have Luke Hansen's thanks from the uh, the Cougar Chronicle. And then this last Super Chat we'll read before we dive in. So, Jackson, you got, you know, 30-second warning here. Best kept secret for doctrinal deep diving, Gospel Library for Windows. Syncs with all other church GL apps and has awesome capabilities. Uh, interesting. Okay. I only use Windows really for live streaming and... Um, uh, Adobe Premiere editing all of these different videos. I'm a Mac guy myself, but I'm sure that many Windows users out there will very much appreciate your recommendation. Jilk? Am I pronouncing that right? Jilk? I don't know. Okay. Your guess is as good as ours. All right. So, <laughs> Jack. Hey, by the way, people, yeah? we only have 144,000 spots in the kingdom here. So, this okay. membership's got to <laughs> slow down, people. We're never going to get to Brother Jackson here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's funny, man. All right, so Jackson, my man, j let's just jump right in. Tell us, tell us what you think, man, and turn your volume hey. up. Oh can, no, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, I'll turn your volume up. I got you, I got okay. you, brother. I got you. Would you be able to? Oh, is that just plugging? Sorry, I'm plugging in my iPhone here. All right, so I uh, wanted to. I'm so glad you have a microphone in front of you so that I'm listening through your laptop. You are not the technical one of your brothers, are you? I yeah, make not. sure that make sure that microphone's on, bro. Yeah, let, let's get your microphone on so that we can hear you through the microphone instead of through your laptop. Is it on? <laughs> At this know, point, man. I can't tell, but we're just gonna go with it, bro. But we're, can you hear me clearly? I, I you know, good enough. Let's go with that, bro. <laughs> Gosh dang it, bro. Well, whatever. I wanted to hop in on this because, to my knowledge, in the internet age, it, I mean, maybe you guys correct me if I'm wrong. This is like when this first came out, Mississippi Bishop, like, over the pulpit, resigns from his position. Like, I don't know. Have any of you seen something like that? So brave. Yeah. So bold. And, so brave. And so it, it was kind of startling because the fact he was so vague and in his reasoning why it made a lot of people like start to search out for reasons why would admit why would a bishop you know forego serving the full term of his calling um to to resign hayden's facetiming me here he's gonna help me do the do the microphone so you can hear me okay well we, we won't listen no. to your facetime i will say while you're doing that very quickly um that that would be consistent with anti-Mormon rule. I believe it is number seven that they never have specifics. They always rely upon vagaries. And then rule number two is they hold your humanity hostage. And one of the most common ways the anti-Mormons operate is that they use some kind of vagary like, oh, well, once I discovered the truth about X, Y, or Z thing, um, and they oftentimes won't even say what X, Y, or Z thing is. They'll just say, oh, once I, you know, discover the falsity of the truth claims, my only choice was but to go and to leave and then to do cruel things to my family and say horrible things about the church online and so on and so forth. And so when we call that process into question and the radicalization that has been happening for years online, um, you know, it, it, it rubs some people wrong and so on and so forth. And, and Quaku wanted to say something. And I want to be clear. I was kind of defending <clears throat> The Mississippi Bishop. I was too. Like, yeah. I was defending him. I think I it's made a joke about claim. him being good it's looking. An odd claim. I roasted him for being good looking. I said he looked like Vin Diesel. I know. I think I said he looked like everybody in the Fast and the Furious movies because they're all jacked guys who are bald. Okay. <laughs> you he, said Jason Statham. Jason was, Statham. That yeah. Was, that was yeah. the exact. Okay. It's like, okay, like, like, look, look. Jonah, wouldn't you be very happy? If you watch an ex Mormon channel, like who's this this Gerard Butler looking guy? You'd be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and so. Um so for those of you that are just turning in yeah. right now, we're going to go over one of the claims that were made against us. And one of the claims that was made against Kwaku, L and, and me specifically was basically one of meanness. Niceness culture really demands that mean people be punished and be put out of a polite society. But how do you de define mean? Well, you don't know. Um, apparently, you don't have to finish the video like everybody saying that Kwaku, L was was mean and I am mean didn't do. But and he, he admits that he didn't finish the whole video. Can you hear me better oh now? Oh, my goodness. You sound great buddy let's go bro. almost hey. like a professional your exactly. voice pierces your voice pierces to the soul gosh like rushing hey, the so, so yeah so anyway we've been <laughs> we've been we've been accused of basically being mean 
okay, and making fun of somebody. I would argue that calling into question the process is not the same as calling into question the person, but other people don't view it that way. So is this just anti-Mormon tropes and um, processes getting recycled? Is this an honest error? We're going to discuss all of this, and I can see Quaker wants hey, to jump hey, in. Uh, Hayden. Jackson, oh, Jackson. Jackson. Jackson, sorry. Don't Jackson. worry, Quaku. Jackson, Jackson, yeah, Jackson We Rain haven't Paul. much interaction because uh, Carden's been gatekeeping you for the past 12 months here. So. <laughs> you saying that he's been... Why is my hair <laughs> well, yeah, well, I don't know why you keep saying weird. that, bro. But let's keep going. Lighting's making my hair look weird. But um, So, Jackson, um, a lot of people accuse members of the church of being homophobic. Um, and I just want to say you and Hayden might get accusations of that. Um, one, you're conservative at Latter-day Saint men, but two... Based on the set in your video, it's clear you do not have any gay friends that can help you with your interior design. I mean, you look like you were about to launch a fatwa on somebody with that lighting and that dark background. Bro, but, we believe in keeping things plain and precious. We don't do anything more dude, than we need to, all right? So black and brown makes audio. Quaku frown. How do you have a brown <laughs> table, a brown Mac, and a black backdrop? You're wearing a black shirt in front of a black... Ba Homeboy, dude, I what do are you doing? Hayden, Hayden always gets pissed for me, uh, for me wearing a black shirt, but that's my favorite color, and I don't care if I look like a floating head. But lads, <laughs> let's get right into it, okay? I want to okay, start get off into with it. I, I have a bunch of time stamps here, all right, and I want to actually start off with what he said uh, about your guys' first video, um, so we can kind of set the tone and maybe you know go about this in a in a better way hopefully but go go uh if you have the video pulled up on youtube do you, do you already have that Carden? um i i can get it give me the timestamp. all right uh so go to th three hours 19 minutes and 22 seconds okay so i'm going to three hours 19 minutes and 22 seconds all right so yeah. i'm here at 28 seconds and then, man, these three-hour videos that they do on Mormon stories, man, it's so hard to scrub through them because you scrub through, like, one quarter, quarter, quarter millimeter, and all of a sudden, like, 15 minutes have gone by. So, anyway, um, here we go at said timestamp, Mississippi Bishop play. When this went viral. Yeah. And all of a sudden, people, like, the radio, the, the what were the Mormon, the the. What's the guys that made fun of me for an hour and a half? Is it Radio Free Oh, Ward Radio. Ward Radio. That's okay. Made fun of you for an hour and a half. Uh, no, we're going to let him finish. What are you talking about? We're going to let him finish. Uh, yeah, we're going to let him finish. Let him Cardin finish. Yeah, let him the finish. guy behind the soundboard? That's Cardin Ellis. Cardin Ellis? Yeah. I'd like to sit down with him. C'est moi? And talk to him. Mm. I think okay. he's completely misread me. I, I don't appreciate what he's done, but I'm not a coward. And I'd stare him in the eyes, and I'd talk to him. <laughs> well, now that you're promising eye contact, now that you're promising sorry, sorry. eye contact. Just, just to be just just to be clear, I saw this guy. I didn't watch the full video, but I just like heard he made fun of me, and I, I want to sit down. Did he and say, stare him in the eye? I'm not a coward. <laughs> what are you talking? Oh, well, about? hold on. Let's let him finish. Let's let him finish his own words. Let's see what he's got to say. And give what him a real narrative. Of? What oh, did he accuse you of? I couldn't only listen to 20 minutes of it. Yeah, oh, they just like, mocked so my fresh. videos. My, not my videos, off. but the the resignation. <laughs> They spent an hour and 40 minutes making fun of me, basically. Wait, so you didn't watch the whole video, but you're confident it was an hour and 40 <laughs> minutes of us making fun of you. Um, also, I said he looked like Travis Kelsey. That's what I said. Okay. Ah, that's true. Ah, that is, yeah. I'm getting Travis the Kelsey. The freaking vibe. number one heartthrob for all women in the country. <laughs> I gave the guy the best compliment I could have given him, and now I'm making fun of him. No, but this is niceness culture, bro. And this is why all the modern anti-Mormons are so good at this. Because we have gotten so rich. Our post-war wealth has gotten us so rich that we haven't had to dig deep in order to understand what our doctrine is, where we come from. We stand on the shoulders of giants and we just collect the dividends instead of building another rung on the ladder for future generations, okay? And in our wealth, we've shifted to going onto autopilot. We don't know the reason we, we're, we're here right now or why things got so good. And we just assume that we just, I don't know, deserved it. And then we fill in all these gaps with other just bad arguments from the culture around us, from our Puritan and Protestant upbringing and so on and so forth and we can't even describe our own doctrine and when so we get attacked with bad ideas that are non-doctrinal we say wait no hold on a second that's not true well that's a violation of niceness culture niceness culture okay 
is the language of the wealthy and the wealthiest society in the world is uh, uh, America. And we worship a golden idol of suburbanism and niceness culture. And the ultimate diss in niceness culture is to say, well, so-and-so's mean. Oh, well, I wouldn't wear that. Just like these underhanded insinuations that don't actually have to be based on anything. You don't actually have to prove anything. We're going to come with timestamps and use very specific uh, arguments, they don't have to. Niceness culture doesn't have to. When you watch uh, Rick Bennett saying, oh, well, Midnight Mormons, they're really crass. Well, define crass. Based on what? Show me the timestamp. When did I use some horribly vulgar swear word that is far too crass for you, right? It, it, this, this is just all underhanded insinuations based upon vagaries that are really prolific in suburban niceness culture, it well, seems like and, to me. And, and, I mean, if... To be clear, if we did make a podcast that was an hour, 40 minutes, just making fun of him, okay, yeah, that's that, that's bullying. If, it, if this was just a, he signed up for the Comedy Central roast without realizing it, okay, that's not fair. But, I mean, I, I really can't recall us making fun of him. We made a couple jokes about him being really handsome and being jacked. And no, we and, may have and been- I remember even a few times, like you guys were trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but because he was being so vague and stuff, like, yeah, the, I remember the- Carton saying a few yeah. times, like, we don't know really what he's been through, but I mean, I don't know if this is the best way to go about it. But Carton, we have about like sixteen of these timestamps, and okay. if we take Holy ten smokes. minutes on each one, okay, then we're no, not we, we get won't, to any we won't take ten minutes. We'll just <laughs> but, go but on. Fi- but finish this one. Go, go, uh, keep playing until. Uh, Three hours, 20, 20 minutes, and 36 seconds. Because okay. he says something special that I think you'll like. <laughs> okay. You you just tell me when to stop on this. The only, All right. Uh, you just tell me when to stop on this, and we'll go forward. The only reason why I lay this down as a foundation, though, is just so that people understand what's going on here. The reason why online anti-Mormonism has thrived under niceness and suburban culture is because all of the adults in the room are not online. The leaders that should be stepping up and intervening and providing good content are pre-internet boomers who are unaware of the battlefield. Okay, so those that should be stepping up and providing content are not. And then those that are providing content against us can thrive with all these insinuations and vagaries. That is the battlefield right now. And every time this is what we do, we get attacked and we defend ourselves saying, oh, no, we're not this. Oh, no, we're not that. And what happens is that Overton window is bumped a little bit to the right or sorry, a little bit to the left every single time away from what the truth is as somebody has to defend themselves because we're not creating culture that bumps the Overton window over here. So, I mean, I will defend myself. That's fine. But also we reserve the right to say somebody's just lying, you know, like somebody's just lying. We will violate niceness culture and say, if it's a lie, we'll tell you you're a liar and you don't get a bump the Overton window that extra inch because I'm too afraid to offend you. Just like V for Vendetta says, we can put a veneer over the devil himself. Uh, sorry, V for Vendetta quoted Shakespeare. Sure. Um, so anyway, yes, we'll let him finish. Tell me when to uh, stop. Pardon, you're Jackson. peeking. Oh, I'm peeking? You're going into red. Sorry. I, I apologize. Thank you for watching that. I was, I was getting excited. So here we go. Boom. All right. Hey, play. And that's fine. I would never do that to him. I don't know him. And even if I did, I wouldn't do it to him. Mm. So it's sad that these people feel the need to do that. Sometimes I wonder if they're employed by the church to just make noise. <laughs> um, Don't pause it. Keep playing. Keep playing. As much as I'd love to put him in a heel hook or a chokehold oh. and teach him how to be a decent person, <laughs> I don't think you can. Whoa. Some people just want to talk mess on people, so that's fine. All right. You can pause it there. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, so, so the week that Mormon Stories co-host went to go spy on the gay guys at church, I just got physically threatened by a Jason Statham lookalike with a, a tow hook and a chokehold. Is this like when New Name Noah said he was going to beat up Dallin H. Oaks? Do you remember that? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> to be fair, when, when Mike Norton was doing that, it, he, he sounded like a psychopath. He sounds like... Just like he's a little, he's annoyed, you know? Yeah, either that or else he's your crazy neighbor that you wonder if their red flag laws will kick in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and whether he's got a gun or not. Like, are you kidding me? 
Bro, so, look, I don't so you want to say any... you're not a coward and you want to look me in the eyes just to put me in a toehold? Well, first, I don't think he's tall enough to actually get a toehold, <laughs> technically, but that's just an argument we can make later. But uh, you know. Just so people know, <laughs> he's not calling uh, uh, the Mississippi Bishop short. Cardin is shockingly tall. Yeah. Shockingly <laughs> tall. No, C- Cardin is tall. the tallest person you've ever met. No. Yeah, he, wears, he wears six-inch heels everywhere he goes. Yes, that's uh, that's. You're that's, taller than John DeLynn. No, no, it surprised me. Oh when, wait, yeah, no. John when DeLynn. we met, remember he's John DeLynn is really yeah. tall. I was about to say he. I know for a fact, I am not the tallest person you met because I have a picture of you. It's actually a very lovely and touching picture where two sides of the argument meet in the middle and they talk. And I, 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 I took that picture. I still have to send it to him, but I think it was a lovely and a touching photo. And yeah, you've met a six foot six, or I'm a six foot five and a half, or my man. Well, but John DeLynn, do, John DeLynn has all that adrenochrome. That he drinks. So oh. <laughs> now, now you're in Quaku's corner, and they're going to be clipping us, man. Now you're in Quaku's corner, and they're going to be clipping us, us. Clipping us. The guy is the guy is physically threatening you off of watching. Okay, minutes. wait, pause, 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 pause. Let's not be the neighborhood Karens here, okay? Oh, that no, wasn't I mean, a physical threat. I don't know. Let's no, no, listen again. What he again. didn't say. Next time I see Cardinellis. It's on site. He didn't no, say no, that. Right. It's, on, it's on, not a threat. On. It's like when people get canceled and they're like, I've been receiving death threats. No, you haven't. No, 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 Show no, no, me. No, 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 no. We're not whining about that. I just think No, it's let's hilarious. rewatch it. Let's rewatch it. I mean, well, remember, we're hypersensitive here. We're hypersensitive. We got to be hypersensitive. It's, we're no, never going to get through any of these. Well, this will be the last one. We'll get, we'll get through it. So, this, <laughs> so, so am I in the right spot? Hayden, uh, and I'm sorry, sorry, Jackson. I called you Hayden again. I'm going to do that twice today. Is this the right spot? What's that timestamp again? Um, just go back to three hours and like 20 minutes, three hours and 20 minutes. Here we are. Oh, that was, that was cool. So three hours and 20 minutes right here. Boom. Shagalaka. They spent an hour and 40 minutes making fun of me basically. And that's fine. I would never do that to him. I don't know him. And even if I did, I wouldn't do it to him. Mm. So it's sad that these people feel the need to do that. Sometimes I wonder if they're employed by the church to just make noise. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but as much as I'd love to put him in a heel hook or a chokehold <laughs> and teach him how to be a decent person, I don't think you can. Some people just want to talk mess on people, so that's fine. But... I just... Sorry. Look. Look. Jack... <laughs> Jackson, I know you're annoyed that we keep stopping. I want to say, th- I want to say two things. First one, the Mississippi Bishop would actually like to fight Jackson solely because he's never boxed a guy with an invisible torso. I got- second, <laughs> <laughs> second, homeboy has Darren Southam energy. Oh, that super intense, oh. like everything is the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and the syncopation. I, I don't know that. I, I, I wouldn't say that to him anyway. Pause. But I'd like to sit down with him. And in the, the 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 lips, like brothers and sisters, he's got the Darren Southam energy. And again, yeah. he was just a bishop, and a lot of bishops have that. But I'm noticing that that's interesting. That's very interesting. Just as a guy who is into marketing, I think that's very interesting. The way he has that direct <laughs> diction, pause, seriousness, and it's more serious the quieter he gets. That's how you know he's mad because he's not getting louder. He's oh. getting more quiet. Okay. All right. Well, Jackson, give us the next one, my man. What's the next well, hold one? Hold on. Here? Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got some super chats. Just want to make okay. sure that we're on time. Hit El us Marie with the super, chats. super chats. Yeah. El Marie super chats says, correction, it's Mississippi, Bishop. You're welcome. P.S. My oh. name means light, and the gematria for light is 144. Therefore, I'm in. Don't be jelly. I took your spot, deuces. Okay. Um, and then. By the uh, way, feel free on... to euphemize or skip over any anti Mormon chats that are vulgar. That happens sometimes when we do these interfaith. Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes. No, that was all yeah. <laughs> also, um, man, there's a lot. Uh, let's see. Going all the way says the irony that Quaku on Saints was the reason I was baptized, and now here we are again. I pray for the Mississippi Bishop. He's on the wrong road. Oh. Amen. Amen. I was the reason you were Hansen, baptized. Luke Hansen, the uh, I know, I know, I know. They scrubbed you now, though, so you're not doing any good on that channel anymore because they scrubbed sure, they you out of scrub it. They did scrub me off of it. Gotta get you out of it. Then uh, Brother Luke Hansen, by the way, whose new channel, Zion's Camper, is up. You can all go check him out on YouTube. Luke Hansen, the clip master of Ward Radio, says, guessing he didn't get to the part where we all sincerely agreed that he needed prayers. And I stand by that. He's a loved son of God. Yeah, I, I, 
Ah. Watson, now, this is classic basing your judgment off of something very, very large, off of just a tiny, tiny dose, is the easiest road out of the church. You read like half a quote from somebody and you're like, that's it, I'm out of here. Well, it's also the rewriting of history. Like in the society at large, there's this massive woke rewriting of history that started the 1619 project and has been perfected in all kinds of other tropes. And it's one of the common, I think it's uh, anti-Mormon playbook rule number like 15 is you have to rewrite your own history and all of a sudden amplify all of these things in your history that you'd forgotten and then also rewrite every good thing that was done to you as something horrible and then make a, you know, a 15 uh, page Facebook post out of it. Now, when I wrote that rule, it was, you know, I, I hadn't thought of the, uh, the, the subreddit video, but anyway, Jackson, we've been far too disrespectful of your timestamps. So you get the next three with no interruptions. Go. No, I, I mean, we, I, we need to talk about these things and especially some of these clips that we're going to bring forward. Like, there's going to be a lot to talk about because when this initially happened, like, there was so much vagary to it. Everyone could, you know, hypothesize whatever reason they had and go out looking for reasons that they think this bishop could have, uh, could have abandoned his calling, like, or, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever way you want to call it. But I, I think it's so important because as I watch this and listen to kind of his attitude towards the church, towards the gospel, like, he started back, you know, at, you know, his beginning where he met his wife and everything like that. It was just so clear to see how if you understand like his background in the gospel and like where he's coming from and how he looks at the commandments and stuff like that, it's it's pretty easy to see how it, it would be hard that this wouldn't happen to him, in my opinion. And one of the most important reasons that I think that we need to make this video highlighting these, you know, kind of concerning ideas uh, pardon, go to one hour, 51 minutes and 18 seconds. This is probably the, the reason that I wanted to talk to you guys about this the most, um, because of the effect that it is having. So go to one hour, 51 minutes and 18 seconds, and I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, so one hour, 51 minutes, and here's 12 seconds. We'll have a little bit of a lead The in. Travel Crafters oh, at Exotica. Oh, with a commercial. Oh, oh we don't have a... With a commercial. I'm going to mute it. Hold on. Give me a second. During that, okay, during here that we commercial, go. commercial, we have a super chat from Elle Marie. She says, if you need another bodyguard, I have laser beams that shoot out of my eyes and tiny nunchucks and a ladder because I'm five foot three. You can pay me in Wild Cherry Pepsi and Twizzlers namaste or namaste okay for those awesome. of you who are indian yes awesome. and then one other super chat from william woodall says there's a video of glenn beck talking about a church leader warning about devil worshipers in the government you should watch that is that Isn't is that. very offensive Quaku that is very offensive Quaku supports the government okay. <laughs> in every avenue in every place in every nook and every cranny yeah it just is the people by you the way the government you hate this reminds me john delin i have a message for you Oh, After we're done talking about this, I have a message for you, John Delin. Oh, okay, good. I thought oh, I was going to have to edit something else here. Okay, <laughs> whoo! Anyway, right, here we go. Clear. Here is the video right here for all to watch. Go. It's muted. Yep. It really is. I mean, sometimes there are people that get annoyed. Why? Do you, why are you so like calling focused on Mormon stories? Why is it so important for you? to have a regular rotation of ex-Mormon bishops on Mormon stories or ex-state presidents or ex-Relief Society presidents. All I can say is it's because the church is a patriarchy run on power and authority. And so power and authority matters. And so if a bishop chooses to leave the church or even question the church, members are going to pay attention to that. And yes. that's partly why, why we're sitting here why we're, and why your TikTok <laughs> exploded. It's because because members are like, what? A bishop can't lose their faith, let alone resign. You know. Okay, so do I keep going, Jackson? Do I keep going, my man? Yeah, well, he just goes on to say that he, since uploading that video of his resignation, he's had at least five bishops and two stake presidents reach out to him and say that, you know, they're in also some sort of a faith crisis, right? Wait, so should I just let and, it keep going? Yeah, just keep playing. Yeah, I just keep hear playing. It. Yeah. Let's, see what, let's see what he's got to say. Just tell me when to, tell me when to pause, my man. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. John, five bishops have reached out to me and two stake presidents. We've been Wait, talking. actively sitting bishops? So you've spoken with five actively serving bishops and two actively serving stake presidents? Yes. Wow. They told me that I gave them the courage to do what they feel that they couldn't do. Mm. Okay, pause there. 
Okay. It's Darren Southam. It is Darren Southam. You're totally right. <laughs> That's funny. They never refute scripture. They only fulfill it. They don't refute the membership. They only act like it. Right? That's kind of funny. And I want to be clear. I'm not making fun of the Mississippi bishop. <laughs> it's just my <laughs> shtick on the show. I always find people who look like other celebrities. I've done this almost every episode. I just, I want to be clear. I'm not making fun of you, This dude. isn't like Trolls 3, where like the dad comes up to the villain character when she was young and says, would you like these cookies? And she's like, stop the press! <laughs> you know, it's like it's pretty funny, man. So, I yeah, dude, I remember watching about. that in Trolls Three, dude. That was crazy scene. Uh, I got in kids, Trolls man. Three. I got yeah. kids. Yeah. So Jackson, hit us. What did you think? So the that's the reason that I wanted to make this video is because people are seeing this resignation, seeing the vagaries, and then they're then going out to find their own reasons to be like, okay, if a man that's called as a bishop or he's saying these five other bishops, two stake presidents. Like generally we see them as solid people in their testimonies, right? And so when he just throws out these vagaries and then everyone's just searching for reasons why, it's very important that we understand his background and his attitude towards kind of stuff in the gospel and his, his uh, yeah, it, so that we can kind of get things in context and be like, oh yeah, if I put myself in that position or if I had that kind of attitude, that that's honestly probably the the conclusion that's gonna that's gonna occur resigning over the pulpit you know what i'm saying okay and so he he starts off and like you said this is like three hours and 40 minutes so like if we could go through each individual piece like it would be great but let's we just, just do don't it really fast time. no we'll do it really fast give me the timestamps, bro because nothing is better than actually showing the audience what you're talking about instead of you paraphrasing it so just give me the timestamp, and we will go to it my man what's the first timestamp you want me to hit Okay, so I, I kind of want to start off where things, because the first like 45 minutes, uh, they're just kind of talking a little bit about their background upbringing. And unfortunately, they both had, you know, in, situations of abuse from church members. And one thing that I can agree, there's actually a few things in this interview that I agree with him on. And I think we can all agree that if someone has abused a child, if someone is a pedophile, and we know that for sure, we should do everything in our power to make sure that they are behind bars and never put in a position to harm another child again. Is that something like we can all mutually agree on? Oh, dude, Wait, I, but Jackson, but what about their We should We should cover it up. We should spend millions on lawyers to just try to cover it because we've got to get like a couple more dollars of tithing out of them. Obviously, that's our motivation, Jackson, right? John, yeah. DeLynn, John DeLynn knows that really... We love, though, we want all those abusers in our church because the sweet, sweet tithing money. I mean, he's it's case closed on this. Investigative yes. reporter. You know, uh, your away. short answer is yes, we all agree yeah, on that. Jack, Jackson, and look, I, I'm, I'm pro-prison reform. I want to abolish most prisons. I think, uh, look, the Jordan River is, is pretty deep. With with, <laughs> with with pedos, you just it's one little <laughs> bop on the head and you throw them in. It just it takes care of itself. It, just, it takes care of it. Boom, bah, yes, it's gone. The, the, you but know? see, again, the fact that we're even having to defend ourselves at something that is so obvious just yeah. shows that they are successfully trying to shift that Overton window. So I yeah. think this, to me, smacks of a lie of a premise. Um, I would be interested in watching maybe the first two minutes of this because I have a feeling that there's probably just lies about the premise in the very first two minutes. Mm -hmm. If you have timestamps that you want to go to, we can do that. Um, I only have watched the first two or three minutes of this because when I watched it after I called you, you said, hey, hold on a second. I want to give you timestamps and I want to get your live reaction. So would you prefer that we go to these timestamps that you have or do you want us to be able to just dissect the first two minutes and then move on to the timestamps? You choose. Yes, Jackson. actually, I think that's good. And one of the, the first two minutes is in my timestamp. So just oh, wait to the also I got called beginning. out out here in the comments as my, one of my things I said to make fun of him. Oh, okay. Okay, they said what about the <laughs> You know a joke you know something was a good joke when someone's trying to recall the story of how it was offensive and you still laugh a second time. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently in the live stream in the, in the video I made a joke about him putting creatine in his sacrament water <laughs> because he's so jacked. <laughs> That's funny. That's not making fun of him. That's me being funny. Well, he does look oh, like a, he's, he's a f in phenomenal shape. Funny. He looks like a professional athlete. Like, I mean, <laughs> that, that that's funny. Are we is that considered making fun of someone? When you say, hey, you're really good looking and you're in shape. Like, Anti-Mormon rule number five is that your humor is the first thing to go. And Elon Musk yep. talked about this. 
Elon Musk talked about this because they do not have the conceit of the joke and the moral high ground. The and humor relies upon that. Then ultimately, that's the first thing to go. So anyway, yeah, it is kind of funny. Uh, I you know blood test him. There might have been creatine in his uh, like you know, that is water. <laughs> do you guys know you know Patrice O'Neill when Patrice O'Neill is d- interviewing the feminist on Fox News? Yeah, and what she tries to she tries to recount an offensive joke he made. Yeah, and then she describes it, and he goes. No, he, I can't even say what he said because it's so shocking, but the cameramen start laughing. You yeah. can hear them laughing <laughs> off screen because of how funny the joke was. And even in her outrage, it was hilarious. That's how I feel. Okay, so, so far we've been physically threatened while being told they want to look us in the eyes and uh, that we're the mean ones. And now... Which, by the way, only my girl can do that. I'm into that a little bit, but that's not like it's got to be... If you... you can, <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I don't Carter, know where you're Carter, going with Carter, that. But. You left out, Carton, you left out the most important part, which is he didn't listen to the episode. Yes. He listened to a tiny sliver and is basing everything Okay, well, let's go to the beginning here. Sliver. Let's go to the beginning here and see what our boy has to say. Along with his uh, wonderful spouse, Amanda. And so here in studio, we have, and I'll say bishop because in Mormonism, once a bishop, always a bishop, right? <laughs> Hey, Bishop Nick Jones. Hi, John. How you doing? Doing okay. Thanks for having us on. And uh, we also have in studio Amanda Jones. Hey, Amanda. Hey. I'm going to 1.5 this yeah. until we get the All good the way stuff. from Mississippi. And yes, uh, we're also, as always, grateful to have my partner in, in life, uh, Margie DeLynn. Hey, Margie. Hello. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, we do. We are live streaming this one because we thought it would be useful to have uh, people in studio. Or, no, sorry, to have people uh, sharing their questions that? or comments. And we'll just integrate them uh, throughout today's episode. But welcome to everyone. What did you say? Did you notice that? Notice what? You didn't notice it. He no. said, my partner in life. And oh. that made me immediately think, not time. What do you mean? What is it time in all eternity? And I was like, oh, I guess. Uh, well, maybe he was just, oh, just trying to wax poetic while you know doing an, in, uh, an intro. I'm not sure. And for the record, I do believe that John and Margie will still be together in the next life. Oh, that's lovely. I do believe that's that. That's lovely. Well, here we go. And let's let him finish. Everyone who's joining us on YouTube, Facebook, or anywhere else, um, uh, please do us a favor and subscribe to our channels, hit the like button, comment, etc. And we're always grateful to our donors that make all this possible. So a uh, huge thanks to them. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, Nick and Amanda, y'all aren't necessarily uh, public people. So um, let's begin before we jump into your individual stories that, that leads to this momentous event a few weeks back. Okay, well, actually, first off, I would argue with that premise. The second you, in a very public way post that you are leaving the church in a way that was meant to be public obviously because it was pre-recorded and then want to retreat into when people push back on your process you don't get to just retreat into this oh i'm just a private person you're on mormon stories getting interviewed on the number one anti-mormon podcast in cyberspace after having done a very public rage quit from uh, the pulpit, and then your first thing you do is go on ex Mormon subreddit two days later and post an explanation video as the ex Mormon subreddit hero that you are. I'm sorry, these are all very public actions. Like you don't get to all of a sudden retreat into the the confines of a private figure if you rage quit from the pulpit and then go on ex Mormon subreddit to post it. And then, okay, maybe somebody else posted it for him, okay? But then go on Mormon Stories podcast in order to talk about it. That That's that's a faulty premise. Let's let him keep going. Um, let's begin with intentions, because different people tend to make different assumptions as to why someone would come on Mormon Stories podcast, and they're almost always wrong, especially if those people are kind of Orthodox believers. So Nick and Amanda, do you each want to start by just sharing why you wanted to come on Mormon Stories and tell your story? Nick, you go to. first. Okay. Um... This was never meant to be a public thing. The, wait, what? what? Here, let him finish. Let him finish. Okay, what he's gonna okay, say. okay. Let okay. Him finish. I just like, like I'm dressed to the nines, and I show up in church in my prom outfit. This wasn't meant to be a public thing. Like I just thank <laughs> you, Sister Williams. Thank you, Sister Williams. But I, yeah, just, what, I is, what does he mean by that public? I want to see. What yeah, he fine. Well, let him go. Let him yeah, continue. listen to what he's gonna say. We've shared this with a few friends who would actually take the time to listen to us, who who are still in the church. Um. I'd actually wanted so badly to do it the week prior, but it was Christmas Eve. And I didn't want to ruin the spirit of it all. But it was giving me terrible anxiety to come to the church building and to serve as the bishop for several months. 
um, because of some truth claims that I've come to understand were just not accurate. And uh, so we waited for the following week, the, it was New Year's Eve, to just let the ward know, and that was my full intent, was to let the ward family know that I loved them and that I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, little did I know that my younger sister, she, she actually came just to visit. She didn't even know I was planning to step down until that morning, mm -hmm. but uh, she recorded it. Now, I had asked my wife to do an audio recording just in case I said something that would get me in trouble. I could always refer back to it and share with you know whoever may complain. But uh, she made a video and sent it to uh, my family, my, my brothers and my other sister. And uh, my older brother, who I love, uh, posted it on Reddit. And he sent me a screenshot of it saying, this thing's blowing up. And I instantly panicked and I asked him to take it down. And uh, he did. He was totally respectful. He said, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't think about that. And uh, we went to bed that night thinking this thing would just disappear. And uh, we woke up the next morning to find that there were about 500 million views, or not five, 500,000 views, and uh, it was growing. And we noticed that some people had edited the video and posted it, and it was a little disheartening and somewhat of a shock. And uh, so we thought, well, why don't we do the right thing and post the real one so people can know uh, the true story or how, how I really stepped down. Okay, so can we pause right there? Is, yeah, yeah. I got to say, the best thing about listening to this Mississippi bishop and doing commentary on the Mississippi bishop, uh, Jason Statham lookalike slash Darren Southam vibe matcher, you know, <laughs> and John DeLynn simultaneously, is you can listen to their content at one and a half to two times speed and still wholly understand what they're saying. That's you know, what I was thinking. Dude. I was like, double speeding this, and I'm like, I, I, oh, it's, this, it's just normal speed. This isn't a three hour and twenty minute live stream. This is a this is a, 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 a an hour and thirty five minute live stream because I'm able to go at, you know two times speed here. This is great. All right, so Jackson, why'd you take issue with that man? Anything particular, or did we just get oh, to I didn't, know him? I didn't necessarily take issue with it. It just kind of gives you a little background of how that video got out there, and yeah, I mean. I got to tell you, I'm a little bit cynical. To me, this idea that, oh, I didn't know this was going to happen. He's rehearsing a lot of tropes that are obviously tropes that have come from online. So to believe that he wasn't radicalized online and this wasn't the part of somebody's plan to make this very public, I just don't believe. Also, remember, he did post a video on ex-Mormon Reddit the next day walking through the woods talking about the community. And how we're deceived. He's found there. And yeah, so I mean, look, may maybe, maybe both things are true. Maybe he legitimately didn't want it to be put out and then he felt like he had to put it out and then he was like eh, well lemons are here may as well make lemonade and put out the other video but it's I a possibility just, you know if he's able to say that we're mean and we're bullies and we're deceived meaning us as members of the church are deceived and card and i specifically are bullying him then we're allowed to say look that does not necessarily hold up to muster to because scrutiny. it seems a little strange we're not saying it's per like we're not saying you're lying we're saying it seems a little bit Seems a little bit weird, but you also called us all deceived or or brainwashed, brainwashed. something like that. Yeah. So now we're it, tit for tat. I think we're even. Okay. Uh, now, just to catch us up on super chats, William Woodall says John Delin is literally repeating core or talking points right now. My faith is stronger than ever. John Duncan donates five Canadian dollars, which is enough to buy a gumball. Okay. Uh, Tim Mills <laughs> says tough guy wanted attention he got what he wanted and now he wants to get more attention and we're giving it to him oh we don't know if that's and true but ex materia oh, oh oh boy oh boy they're coming fast ex materia says i hope you guys are laboring diligently on the apocrypha project so i can get a copy before i leave for my mission ex materia remember that you can find our videos on Facebook, even when you're out serving in the field. Don't tell your mission president, but you can find them. And Badge the Honey Badger says, the bishop has the look I saw over in Iraq and Afghanistan. Hatred and rage. I think he's just really hurt. Uh, I do definitely believe oh. that there's somebody in need of healing here. And that's actually one of the things that is so sad. No good deed goes unpunished. I think everybody here said... Uh, being a bishop can be stressful. That stress can compound all kinds of other pre-existing conditions. And, um, you know, if one of those pre-existing uh, conditions was intense enough to make you want to threaten to put somebody a toehold and a chokehold on a national live stream, which, by the way, can be so easily misinterpreted and taken out of context and used, like, in a court of law against you. I'm like, man, dude, good thing you were threatening me. You know what I'm saying? And, like, who's not going to do that to you? But you don't think if you did that to somebody else, they couldn't be more cynical? Yeah, also what? made the video in his kitchen with his kids saying, what are we going to do today on Sunday? And then because, mocking the Sabbath you know, by bragging about how go, he's going to break it. You know, like yeah. that, that to me, that does not 
s- like smell of I did not want any of this attention. You no, know, he, he's lying. I'm not gonna say that. I, I I'm mean, not gonna I don't say know. I is. don't know if he is lying. We. He could have gone into this not expecting or wanting to be, you know, the next so three champion videos of the X-Mormon in, community. Three videos in on X-Mormon subreddit. You I don't think he so was I, aware that of his... one went viral, then I think... So his you know, video... Hold on. You're saying... Videos. Okay, wait, Jackson. You're saying you believe, just like Kwaku says, I don't believe it. You're saying you believe that that second video that he made specifically mocking the Sabbath and most of your average Mormon families desire to keep the Sabbath day holy... That had come out after his original posting, after the posting where he said Mormons are all brainwashed and believed. You believe that that third video was just an oopsie he had no idea was public. And he didn't do it as the ex-Mormon, anti-Mormon rock star he was obviously perceived at that point. You're saying that it was just unintentional. Whoops, I meant to post it on Facebook, but it ended up on anti-Mormon subreddit. That's what you're saying? No, completely incorrect. And that's okay. why I'm glad that you tried to clarify so that I can correct your understanding. Okay. Essentially, I believe that maybe he didn't, you know, mean for this to be public like he's saying. And then after that first video went viral, obviously he made a second one, saw how popular he was getting. And then obviously if he's making memes about, you know, the Sabbath day with his kids, then it turned into that. But what he's saying initially, this never was meant to be public. Maybe that's true. He's kind of taken advantage of it going forward to this point. Does that make sense? Does that clarify? Sure. No, that's fine. And by the way, I'm, yeah. I'm fine with believing it either way. I'm cool. fine with saying, like, ah, he's lying. I call BS. I'm fine with saying, oh, okay, fine. I don't really believe you. Somewhere in the middle. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah. What's the next timestamp, bro? Yeah. So, essentially, then they go into, like I was saying, their kind of childhood upbringing. And, unfortunately, they did suffer those sorts of abuses from church members. And that's why we all kind of got on the bandwagon that I think everyone's on. Pedophiles suck, and they should go to prison or worse. And so then no, but it goes also, into kind of, like. Is this documented? Because that's a horrible claim to make. And yes, I've, exactly. Yes. Like, is it really documented? I, I'm sorry. I have, like, I, I don't, I, I got to tell you, as a person who is a private investigator in New York City, I know men and women will say anything about their spouse in a divorce to mm-hmm. gain the upper hand. Divorces yep. are the ugliest thing on earth. And the things that wives and husbands say about each other are the most heinous false accusations will come out of divorce, right? Well, there's when you divorce from your faith, I hate to say it, but oftentimes a lot of the same rules apply. And before I can just move that Overton window that we talked about before and let somebody say, yes, I agree with you, pedophiles are bad, and tacitly verify the pre- premise that he was rage quitting as part of his fight against pedophilia in the church or whatever it's going to get morphed into on ex-Mormon subreddit, right? Before I, I grant that premise, I want to know, okay... Well, you know, show me the body, habeas corpus here. Like, show me the documentation this happened, because if it hasn't been prosecuted, it should and I'll help you. You know what I'm saying? And if you're misrepresenting the story, what a horrible thing to claim that somebody in your war did, you know, the unspeakable, just to score points on ex-Mormon subreddit. So I don't know where that is, but I'm just yeah. saying, has there been any proof shown? I mean, there there might be. I don't think that he went into the interview, you know, holding a, you know, having some sort of documentation of it. He name dropped okay. someone. Apparently, his name is David Bennett, and he said that he was previously in prison for pedophilia, and then he became a young men's president, put into a position to do more harm. And so I, I don't. If that's know. true, their leader's an idiot, and I want to see the documentation thereof so we can go after them. Yeah, well, let's pr- prosecute the guy. So yeah. maybe, you know, Nick, if you're watching this, let's let's get this man. He says that uh, something happened and he went to prison and they never saw him again, but he got out after a week, essentially, is what he says. So, so, so here, here's, here's the problem with all of this. And I know there's a lot of former Mormons who are watching this right now. We have a lot of people watching this and a lot of antis in the chat. Here's why the well has been poisoned. Because we all have people in our lives... Who claim who retroactively they rewrite their memory and say that they've been abused or mistreated or something horrible happened in their ward. And we were there and we know it was BS. Okay, that's why this well has been poisoned. So when homeboy comes out and says there was this terrible abuse, color us a little skeptical because we've heard this game played before. I have it in my own family. Oh, yes, I suffered this abuse. Actually, I was there, and you didn't suffer anything of the sort, and you're making this up to justify being a jerk today. 
Okay, so that's why we're a little bit skeptical when people come out and throw these totally unverifiable and un untriable uh, all of us uh, live uh, through robert kavanaugh all of us live through robert kavanaugh yeah. and all of us live through mckenna denson and the horrible uh accusation she made and by the way i actually had a conversation with john delin about rosebud and i talked about saying you know what like that sort of damocles gets hung over men's head far too easily and 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 i think to a certain extent maybe even uh john delin has been burned uh, by by the hashtag believe all women uh, to one degree or another, right? So um, all of us, all of us, you're, you're right. Like color me skeptical. If it's true, there's freaking millstones. You know what I'm saying? If it's false, how dare you levy such a horrible, unspeakable crime on somebody? And so, we're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to, to, to burn people at the stake on your good word. Sorry, we're just not going to do it. And you can't expect us to do it. You can't expect us to sit here and just believe everything you say. There's no Mormon stories with the other people involved in this. All we have is this guy's word. We don't know what happened. And we look, no look idea. up, look up Quaku's name on ex Mormon subreddit, and you'll see why we don't trust these people. They follow him around with ca uh, cameras in Costco. Yeah, yeah that was you know, weird. How they did yeah, that. They, they, they they say horrible, heinous things about him. Uh, everything from a uh, Title IX crimes that he didn't commit by uh, what what's his name. Dude, I, I have the largest honor code file in BYU history. I was investigated by BYU Honor Code, Title IX, and BYU Police and found innocent. Because Calvin of, Burke accused yeah, you of a bunch of Because they accused crimes, me of a right? bunch of crazy, like, sex crimes. So Calvin Burke like, is. wild. Calvin Burke's accusing Quaco of a bunch of fake stuff. You've got McKenna Denson accusing that uh, mission president of a bunch of stuff where she ended up getting outed. We have Brett Kavanaugh being dragged through the mud for three weeks before he's allowed to say, look, I wasn't even at the party. Here's my, you know, calendar, so on and so forth. So anyway. Keep going, Jackson. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, so I mean, obviously I haven't had the, you know, experiences that you guys have. So I I mean, I wouldn't feel, you know, comfortable saying, you know, obviously there might be more of the story. I'm not denying that. Yeah, we're not. Well, I'm, not I'm also, I'm not saying that no abuse happened. We, 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 I mean, I'm just hearing from you say that he mentioned a form of abuse took place about something with a guy who shouldn't have been in that position. But yeah. I think from like the same way we don't invalidate his experience when you've been on the receiving end of fakers who for political or social or just stupid college gossip reasons want to make up things about someone that they dislike it's like i i will no longer grab the torch and go burn someone at the stake yep. socially just because someone Correct. tells me to do so Yes. With Amen. that said, I, I, I shouldn't have said that he was lying previously. I've got Jackson here and I'm trying to my 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 2024, you know, is, is W.W. Jackson Paul. You know, what would Jackson Paul do? He would euphemize it, say it a little bit nicer. This is why all of the Utahns like Jackson a lot more than they like me. So, Jackson, keep going with more. We're going to soften it up a bit. So yeah. then we're going to go forward to where uh, they meet each other. And uh, we're going to go to 47 minutes and nine seconds, Cardin. Okay, 47 minutes and nine seconds. Here we go. 47 minutes and zero seconds. That'll have to be good enough. Uh -oh. oh, another ad. Boo. I have to switch over to my personal account while, here. While we're listening to that ad, okay. Dutch Vanderlind super chats and says, I just wanted an opportunity He's to thank Quaku for his indirect influence on my conversion. Uh, oh. When Ooh. Quaku was on Saints Unscripted, he made the church seem more personal. And along with David Snell, made me curious about it. Thanks, Quaku. Now, we know that that is not true because Quaku was never on Saints Unscripted. If you look at their website, no thumbnails. Yeah. They did. <laughs> hey, but I don't think they're monetizing the videos with me either, so it looks like they're not making any moolah. Oh, uh, Stephen yeah. Diamond also says, man, if only the good word of the Temple Rocks could be spread by others, we all need the peace of God easily found in holy places. And all those who would like to welcome Brother Bo Green to the Ward Radio worship, please do so by putting a W in the chat and that catches up on super chats all right caught up on super chats here we go at 42 minutes in go no 47 i was dating in high school oh 47 minutes in oh yeah it is 47, 47. minutes in here we go <laughs> um so that's how we ended up coming to meet i was young i was 16 when i met nick um just i graduated early so me and my friend Brittany actually we made a trip out okay, here you you can actually pause it there you, you can actually pause it there okay okay I, I just i just wanted to I hear it from the the woman's mouth herself. She was 16 when she met Nick. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. Now just go a little bit forward to 53 seconds and uh, 53 minutes and 10 seconds. 
Okay. 53 minutes yeah. and 10 seconds. Okay, here we go. 50 minutes and three seconds. Good enough. Oh, yeah. yeah. He wrote me one when he moved from our area before going home. I, I had an like, inspired mission me president. A letter. <laughs> yeah, he, he transferred me, the last transfer, and I'm so glad he did because I was I was getting hot and heavy with her. Um, not hot and heavy in the sense that what? like sex, none of that. But okay. I Whew. was pushing the envelope. I wanted to kiss her. You know? Um, I wanted to spend more days on P days or on Sundays at their house than in the field working. And the other rule is that missionaries can never be alone with anyone. They have to always be with their companion. Yeah. So how did you spend time with her? Well, you... yeah, I mean, I think we all can see right now why that's a pretty prominent rule in the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. When you have a bunch of 19-year-olds around that are like, I, I mean, we've all been young men before. There's hormones right? when attractive women are around. Yeah, by the way, 19 and 16, that's jailbait right there. So I'm glad there's those rules so <laughs> oh, that, you know what I'm saying? If No, but seriously, that's why these rules yeah, exist, right. dude. You're right. Yeah. You know? So Here, here keep, keep playing to because there's a really important part I want you to hear, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, cool. You had a companion with you all the time. I had a cool-ass companion. Oh, yeah. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I had a really cool companion, meaning, Jacob Campbell. Meaning I hope he he's watching. What? He let, like... he was, he was, I was training him. <laughs> but he was a good kid, and uh, he understood. He knew what I was going through, and uh, horniness. He was yeah. <laughs> really? yeah, actually, pause really? it right there. Let me give a little bit of context. So he, okay. he <laughs> previously before this that uh, you know he was on his mission. He got transferred into her area. She was sixteen. He was twenty because they have the same birthday. They're four years apart to the date, and he received a letter that his parents were getting a divorce. And so he was transferred oh. into this area. She, like you said, he he caught the hots for her or whatever. Um, and then he had a, a cool companion that allowed him to be alone with her. Continue playing, and then we're going to stop. Okay, and seconds. also, just to clarify for all the people that want to take us out of context, we're not smoking a dude for being attracted to somebody within four years his age. Not at all. Okay? We're, we're smoking the system and the companionship and whoever just, you know... Uh, you're supposed to not let this happen with your companions. Now I'm glad it worked out for him, and in the end, hey, cool, I, I, no harm, no foul. I'm happy but... to do the divorce thing because I thought he was being like he knew what I was going through. It's like, bro, we all know what <laughs> I you're didn't give that context, going now through, it's man. It's... Established. <laughs> okay, cool. So here we go. Let's let him finish. Hey, keep playing. I'll tell you to stop. So ja Jackson, you're funny, man. He was there for me. Hmm. What's sad is I wasn't there for him sometimes too. Hmm. I was selfish. I was learning. Um. But uh, yeah, we did that thing. I kissed her. And I On your mission, her. as a missionary. You better believe it. <laughs> Wait, I thought he just said that he didn't what? kiss her or do anything, and now he's saying he kissed yeah. her. Okay, I think he, said he didn't have sex with her, like... He didn't have sex with her. Okay, keep uh, playing. Keep I playing. Think I didn't tell hot you and heavy, like there was tension. Oh, okay, like, fine. Thick fine, tension fine, whatever. I'll go back. I thought he said kissing her, but he didn't do Whatever, fine. So we're just going to let him finish. <laughs> I laid it on her. And, I, and here's the other thing, John. <laughs> I told her I was going to come back and marry her. And I did. <laughs> oh, you know. Hey, and I'm right people rolling their eyes right now Dude. in the church. Yeah. Imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine if a believing member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints was, you know, a returned missionary, and he's 20 years old, and he was touting about that he caught feelings for a 16 year old member, and. He had a cool campaign that let him be alone with this girl and he he made it like basically kissed her and got hot and heavy, like he said, with a sixteen year old. How do you think John DeLynn would react to that? Yes. Amen. How Let's do you think call. he would react? Like and then he's like all chuckling along. He's like, ah, oh, you you got a cool companion, you know. You you were going through a rough time. You you go ahead and kiss that sixteen year old girl. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's just like if this if the roles were reversed, he would be calling freaking pedophile. He would be he would be plastering this all over. This is what's wrong with the church. They're just following, you know, they're pro like you even imagine that's patriarchy. You, imagine? you feeling can entitled you to a minor. That's patriarchy. Yeah, you're right. Can you you're imagine? Right. Can you imagine if the wife was the one who came to John Dillon's podcast after a messy divorce and said, my husband, he's a bishop. And you know what? When he was a missionary, 
He kissed me and I was only 16. John DeLynn would love it. He'd go nuts with this. This is all because of the church is a patriarchy, because they're they're using their positions of authority and forcing it on underage girls. This is abuse. This Bro, is abuse. My, my parents are 10 years apart. I can't really comment. I'm just like, like I see what you're both saying. It's kind of... The okay. hypocrisy. I'm gonna, okay. Sorry, you're, everyone's going to get mad at me. You're all getting mad at me. It's kind of cute. It's kind of no, cute. No, we don't yeah, care. It's Russian. We don't care. It's ironic Nobody's that John spoken DeLynn the guy. pretends like he doesn't care. That's what's ironic. Nobody. Look, I'm one of those dudes. Yeah, John DeLynn like, has totally different rules. If you're a member of the church... And this happens, and you're bull, and you know, and it's it's flipped. If she's like, when I was 16, this 20, I, I was groomed by a 20 year old missionary, and he kissed me, and I, you know, said he was going to marry me. He would have been all over that. But no, since it, nobody know, is, so I see, I see nobody's you're smoking yeah. the guy for having fall in love with a young, attractive woman that's within four years of him. Nobody's smoking the guy for that. We're smoking the system for the hypocrisy of having to listen in the very same podcast to an accusation that our church is loaded to the hilt with pedophiles who run free under the idea that that's what patriarchy supports and then having to listen to a story about how a guy was kissing a girl against mission rules while he's supposed to be serving the Lord and was romantically engaged at a time when he was supposed to be anxiously engaged and frustrated at the hypocrisy of both ex-Mormon subreddit and all these other places that are constantly trying to say that we don't have any sexual ethics because we don't support their versions of this or their versions of that in the exact same breath that they're saying, oh, how cute. Look, Look, all of us can say, oh, how cute. All of us can say, look, we don't care about the age thing. We do care about the hypocrisy of knowing that if if somebody on our team would have done that, we would all be lambasted as co-conspirators of minor abuse. I think yes. that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. You know what? Mississippi Bishop, if, if we put all this behind us, I'll, I'll make a movie about you falling in love you know you could do a little classic southern movie with the big tall trees or whatever and you're like that state president's daughter she, she's mighty good looking to me sir like we can do it you know <laughs> given the southern accent we could totally make it a cute little like tuck everlasting she's a bit young but uh -huh. golly when i get back from serving the lord she'll be old enough for me you know <laughs> it sounds like, like <laughs> it sounds like straight out of like gone with the wind or yeah, something yeah you know? yeah Okay, and I Jackson. don't want to be. I don't want to. I don't want to sound like a square or anything like that. But he's actually not a bishop anymore. There's thousands of bishops around the world who sacrifice and keep their integrity and keep their covenants and don't sell their integrity for thirty pieces of online reputation silver. Who get to be called bishop? This guy doesn't get to be called bishop. His name is Nick. So let's stop calling him bishop. Okay, fine. Oh, Mississippi Nick. Jonah. Now, see, now they're kind of come after you now. Oh, please, please do, please do. Look, there's bishops all over the world who give everything, and we call them bishops because they sacrifice on behalf of other people and put their pride last, and this guy doesn't do that. So you don't get to be called bishop. Ooh, what? Now you're Am I wrong? Um, so, I think technically, uh, you know, we can argue that in what? a different podcast. He doesn't, he's not even a member of the church. He doesn't have the priesthood. He doesn't well, have did he do the quit the Mormon and resign thing? Oh, I, I thought he did. Did he not resign? I don't know. You'd kind of think it's par for the course if you did what you did to rage quit from the pulpit and start becoming a rock star on X-Mormon He says, it's, he says but... it's all not true. I mean, no, I, whatever. I don't know. Maybe anyway, he is, time if he stamps. doesn't have the office of a bishop, he's not a bishop. Yeah. So essentially, we, we begin to see here, and he kind of touts about how he was never that person to, you know, follow these little itty-bitty itty -bitty rules like, you know, staying with your companion so you don't aren't alone with a, you know, minor and stuff like that. And then it goes on to he. he yeah, to that's true. Hey, he maybe he shouldn't have named Jason Campbell. Thank you for letting me be alone in the minor on my mission. Like <laughs> maybe you shouldn't have named the guy. <laughs> Leave it up to imagination and who it could have been. And, 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 okay, all right, man. And, to be fair, we don't know. We don't. <laughs> we don't know if he was alone with her. I highly doubt that his mission companion was just sitting there in the corner while he's just freaking like making out with the 16 year old, whatever. We, we have no, we don't know. there's a lot we don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, but so, what we do know is what he's going to say at 55 minutes and 49 seconds is the next timestamp. So essentially he gets back from his mission and then he, uh, he talks about, you know, why he felt the pressure to get married so early. And I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts on this 50 55 seconds and 49 seconds uh 55 minutes and 49 seconds okay here we go <laughs> Tell you when to stop. and so you know in mormonism masturbation pornography all those things are bad so when you're 21 years old and 
your hormones are raging, what do you do? I'm sorry. I'm going to go back and start that one again because I laughed. The southern accent saying the word masturbation. <laughs> It's just really funny. Masturbation. <laughs> it's just like, I love it. Okay, so we're going to go back. What was the timestamp again, Jackson? 55 minutes and 49 seconds. Okay, here we go. By now. <laughs> Daylight, daylight's burning. <laughs> and so, you know, in Mormonism, masturbation, pornography, all those things are bad. So when you're 21 years old and your hormones are raging, what do you do? You hurry up and get married. Yeah. So, really you so you don't sin. So you don't commit, you know, sin extra murder. That's right. What? All right, what? you can pause it there. What? I was 29 when I got married. Uh, whatever. Keep going. So it, essentially, like it's putting forth this uh, this attitude, like, oh, so you don't look at pornography and masturbation because that's the only option if you don't get married early. Like it's showing to me a trend of like. He caught hots for his wife on his mission. He couldn't resist and he didn't want to keep the rules. And so, you know, he has this natural inclination and attraction to a woman. So how is he not going to give in to that? And then when he gets back from his mission, like, oh, I can't look at pornography and masturbation. So I have to get married early. You, you see what I'm saying here? Like, there's no like there's no like sense of self-discipline that these other things aren't an option. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? The, yeah, the church loses no matter what. If the church says, keep it in your pants and wait till you're married, then they're being oppressive. If the church says, ah, just roll with it, then they're a, 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 a patriarchy that doesn't ask for uh, consent. I mean, it, they, they lose either way. This is trying to paint the church as forcing them into this as, well, you know, they say that it's wrong. They don't let us be sexually expressive, so we have to get married young. That's what this is, trying to blame it on the church. Yeah, okay. Uh, next timestamp, my man. You did express frustration at the previous ones. Those were two yeah. good, concise answers. We'll move along. I think a lot of people are saying, hey, you know, you can't just have rules for thee and then not, or rules for me and then not for thee. And also, you can't have damned if you do, damned if you don't. Which one is it? Is is Joseph Smith uh, uh, the greatest con man and swindler of all time, or is he just a bumbling idiot? But you don't get to have him be both ways whenever you're trying to disprove the Book of Mormon. And also, which one is it? Is there a horrible patriarchy that tells all the young men that they get to run rough roughshod on the young women as part of the spiritual patriarchy as justified through scripture or you know is the opposite that you've been saying like you you just have to choose pick a lane and stick in it because you don't get a damn us whether we do or we don't it's just plain old not fair so jackson what's the next mm -hmm. one my man so basically then you know they get married or whatever and then it in the next time stamp, I'll let you go to it. It's uh, an hour and eight minutes and 55 seconds. Hour, eight minutes, 55 seconds. Essentially, he goes into talking about how, you know, trying to live up to being the ideal member of the church, he uh, was just working all the time, didn't have any time for his children or, or his wife, and he can't remember his kid's childhood at all because he was trying to live up this to the standard to uh, one day be a mission president, essentially. Uh, let it play. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Here we go. I'll tell you this. I We have five children. Good I job. I remember Luke, the oldest, and Sydney, the youngest. And the rest is a big, giant blur for me. Because I had it in my head that I needed to go out and conquer the financial world what so that amanda and i eventually could go serve missions with each other wow <laughs> we could be mission presidents wait you know that like boyd k packer was a dirt poor seminary teacher his entire life and became an apostle right it's it's all the church's fault man everything's the church's fault i wanted to have a good career because the church hypnotized me into well and into also the, the financial president. sector all the church's fault the financial sector is not the only lucrative sector out there and there's no requirement to be wealthy i think there is a natural inclination that people of wealth will have more leisure time and the ability to serve sometimes when money can uh cross gaps because mormons are very generous and that's been statistically proven by both pew research and other polling organizations that show that they give uh more to charity than pretty much most other subsets of the american society so i i think wealthy Mormons oftentimes can be very generous and that helps you in your service. But we literally just gave a widow's mite in our like second to last live stream to somebody who 
was like showing up early on Sundays to set up chairs and sweep the the chapel once everybody left, uh, first to come in, last to go home because he just wanted to help serve at church, and that that d- doesn't require money. So, do I keep going on this one, Jackson? Yeah, I, keep playing, keep okay, playing. Okay, here we go. And and people say not to aspire in the church. That's just a bunch of bull honky. They all aspire <laughs> to callings. Yeah. The first thing I felt when I was called to be bishop, I'll just share this really quickly, was relief. And most people are like, oh, it's such a heavy thing. Yeah, it is. But the very first feeling I thought was, oh, finally. Now my mom's family and my dad's family will finally accept me because of a calling. What? What Love the it. heck is this guy talking so, about? So it, it, and then John DeLynn, uh, here, let it play a little bit because John okay, DeLynn eats okay. this up. Okay, we'll keep, we'll keep up. going. We'll keep going. Wow. Um, so in my mind, I was always reaching for a future day to be present rather than the present day. Yeah. Hmm. Bro, you need some Eckhart Tolle and some family therapy, dude. Like, if just, that's... I, just I'm, wait to you see what, he, what scripture he's about to quote. Right okay, here. I'm sorry, but if your family's, like, living in that kind of pressure on you, bro, like, I, that's, that, that ain't a church thing, but let's keep going. And I missed... I missed my life yeah. because of that. She, on the other hand, is gifted on the other side of things. She's always been trying to bring me in. Hey, this is where it's at. It's like, it's like music. You know, you, you listen to a song, what to get to the end, to enjoy it. (laughs) Because in Mormonism, that's, that's what it is. Like think celestial. Well, let's, let's wait till the end of the song so we can enjoy the music. (laughs) <laughs> no, maybe thinking celestial helps you enjoy everything along the way because you understand, just as Jonah Bards said in our last podcast, that the gospel of Jesus Christ venerates the every day. When you're out there picking up your kids from school and making sure that they brush their teeth before they go to bed, you're literally raising, you know, a deity and embryo, as C.S. Lewis said, and all of these small things that you do. Are, are greater. We literally have codified his doctrine, the refutation of what uh, Mississippi Nick just said. What is the phrase from Harold Lee that no success outside of the home will compensate for what? Failure within well, in, the in, home. Like yeah. we literally have commentary that has been burnt into the minds of every elders quorum president over the past 50 years that refutes what Mississippi Nick just said. By the way, I realized why he had that whole... Uh, toe hold and arm bar or whatever he said he was going to get me into before on the on the tip of the tongue dude's got cauliflower eel ear he was probably a big wrestler in high school no he said he said he's yeah. a black belt in jujitsu but hold uh, on okay, Carden. cool yeah he, he's gonna give you the solution that you should follow instead oh okay, okay. what's the solution not Eckhart Tolle and t- to me it's like and this is recent for me in my mind just to have this paradigm shift of realizing quit looking for some future day because there isn't one yeah there's now so enjoy the music yeah and dance have fun eat drink and be merry <laughs> no, but I- <laughs> bro i love it when they quote scripture i love it so much bro i love that so much dude this is why Mormon Stories Podcast has been one of the biggest faith strengtheners, not a faith builder, a faith strengthener, because I can totally watch these things and just see how the world is creeping so hard into these people's lives and that their perspective is going from a uh, eternal perspective to something to what he literally just said. Eat, drink, and be merry. Live in the present. He and, goes on. Oh, dude. And by the way, this is us. This is not us just piling on and making fun of losers. We are defending ourselves after having been called brainwashed, having been been called every pejorative in the book by this guy and specifically called out. So we're calling into question your narrative, Nick. You say you want to look at me eye to eye. John DeLynn's got my number, bro. Any day of the week. Of course, he's kind of got that red flag, Darren Southam rage. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe... (laughs) Maybe we might have to have that same security we had about those people that are saying those things in the RFM debate that kind of were a little bit, a little bit too close for comfort. You know what I'm saying? Well, I just, I don't. Maybe we get. Maybe we just have a psychologist review him first or something. I don't know. Just like just now, any or I bring Darren to, Southam with me. He'll be my bodyguard. Darren Southam. He's intense. I, you know I don't what I'm saying? I, I, he's, he's Jack. I think um, so far what I'm seeing from the clips of this interview, you know, this really. Uh, 
shows the impact that the local ward family has on somebody because some people are in great wards, some people are in really gossipy, jerkish, stupid, suburban judgment type of wards. And if he was getting this kind of pressure of, you know, you need to be perfect, you need to, oh, look, less terrorist manifesto. You know, you need to be, yeah. you know, you, you need to make money, you need to be perfect, and you need to have these clones. That's the only way you mean something in life. Well, then, unfortunately, he had a, he had a, that, that's a terrible way to, to, to raise a member of the church. So, I, I mean, you can kind of see the thought process and see the way he was, the way the church went through his brain through his life. Now, the thing I, 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 I dislike is when sometimes John Dillon does these interviews, what happens is people in the comment section who did not have that experience then take that experience, put it upon themselves, and just go, oh, yeah, it was always this way for me. But that's not true. And uh, so I don't deny that he may have had an awful ward and he may have had toxic people in his church life growing up. Um, but I, I do dislike that this will probably be used as now the mass descriptor. Yes. Of what it's like to be Mormon. And, and, and the only thing I would like to say is I want to push back on something you said, Kwaku, is... Tip O'Neill, when he dealt with uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, famously said, all politics are local. Meaning, if locally the Union Democrats are good, most likely in the presidential race, the people at this locality are going to vote for the Democrat. Okay? He said, all politics are local. I actually believe that what the internet did was to reverse that equation. All politics are national even religious politics. Now somebody, even in a great ward, in a good ward, if they get radicalized online by all of these tropes and by all of these stereotypes and by all of these negative posts and the CES letter and the endless just 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 twisted interpretations of their good intentions be it on mormon stories podcast self on the shelf rfm any of them all right that constant morphine drip of negativity cynicism atheism nihilism and depression has an effect on somebody even if they're in a good ward and i would actually say almost all politics are national now somebody can watch fox news every day and be uh, radicalized into being a hardcore right Republican super MAGA who can't even name his local water board, his local school board, or his local congressman or state assemblyman. Because now, with the pervasive nature of the internet and the ability of Fox News to bombard that person through every channel, I actually believe all politics are national now. So he could have a totally good ward, and I'm not prepared to indict his entire ward as having failed him because he, it sounds like to me, this guy was radicalized online. He even said, the truth claims I found out not to be true without naming them. He literally names the very premise of the CES letter. This guy, just like you say, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck and quacks like a duck, you're willing to assume that it's a duck. To me, if it talks like a radicalized ex-Mormon subreddit minion, walks like a radicalized ex-Mormon subreddit minion, and then uh, rehearses tropes like a radicalized ex-Mormon subreddit minion slash superstar, okay, then how do I not to believe that he just hasn't been radicalized before he rage quit? Now, I, now I, I also want to push back on something that Freddie Mercury said. I'm sorry, Quake who said. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, Freddie Mercury! That, <laughs> you're looking good, man. You're just looking good, all right? You got a '70s but, uh, jacket on. It's very. He was talking about okay. your jacket, not. You just you look good. Quick, it's a compliment. All right. <laughs> Don't freak out and go on Mormon Stories podcast and talk about how I bullied you for for ten hours after hearing. You know, don't don't do that. No, no, but, it's uh, good. But you said, I've never seen a man wear a turtleneck inside in his own office. <laughs> Now you got me all self-conscious. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what do you got to say, Jonah? Come on. I was just gonna say that, like, you say if he if he was in a ward that was judgmental like this, that's what it's gonna do. We have no idea what ward he was in. If he was projecting these feelings on other people, everybody aspires to leadership. Everybody breaks mission rules and makes out with a girl. Everybody does all these things. I mean, it's just all over the church. We have no idea the sweet people in his ward. They could have been horrible. They could have been wonderful and godly people. Remember, Laman and Lemuel say, if you remember this from the, and, I, and maybe, maybe Jackson Paul knows the verse. I can't find the verse. They say, we were led out of the land of inheritance. We're all, 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 everything was taken from us. 
you know, all, all the good stuff. We are the victims here. These Nephites, man, they're just they're Father's victims to us. Man. Yeah, and they're complaining about it like they're really the victims here. This guy, we have no idea how wonderful his ward was to him, to his children. His children were in nursery. They were in primary. They were volunteer people changing the diapers of his children in that ward for nothing. And so, you know, if he's going to try to put this on the members of his ward, I think we need to reserve judgment on that because I think this guy's lens is the dark one. And he's just, he's all of them were judgmental on me. I've had this happen in my own family. Oh, it's these people put this on me, and they're re-remembering, rewriting their narrative to make it Darren Southam dramatic and justify the things that they've done. And they're talking to John DeLynn. I don't believe it. Eat, drink, and be it. merry. Okay, our, next our boy, time stamps. Next time stamps. Yeah, John DeLynn hops in here, and he kind of gives the key of being the best member of the Church of Jesus Christ uh, of Latter-day Saints. And it that's at uh, one hour, 18 minutes, and four seconds. One hour, 18 minutes, and four seconds. Okay, here we go. One hour, 18 minutes, and four seconds. Go. John, with, he's starting to get, he's starting to get the, the, the good white in the goatee. I've never noticed that before. Yeah. You know? All right, here we go. The service in the church, you have no time for yourself or for your marriage. Mm -hmm. And so weirdly, sometimes those that are most successful in the church, especially as men, but yeah. also as women, they're the ones that sometimes neglect their spouse and their kids the most. What? That's a weird irony. Let it play, let it play. More okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to respond to that one. But anyway, keep going. Mormonism, because the church does seem to care so much about families and definitely markets that they care so much mm -hmm. about families right but if you're living the model mormon life it just seems like you're not being the spouse and the parent that you really should be do i have that wrong do you want to fill that in john you uh, never even occurred to me that way but now that you say it it makes perfect sense <laughs> well that's kind well, of that, 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 he's what? about to sum it up two okay, more seconds two okay, more seconds okay. i know you're excited I mean, you, you described exactly what I felt, and I just hadn't been able to put it into words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To, to be the best Mormon you can be, you sometimes Absolutely. have to neglect your marriage and your kids. Oh, Holy crap. Come Pause. Down. Dude, <laughs> I'm sorry. Of all the people to talk about this, and I'm choosing my words very, very carefully. Choose my words very, very carefully, because I've had some conversations with John that I am respecting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But men in glass houses should not throw stones. <laughs> and I have to tell you, there is codified refutations to Mississippi Nick, okay, that refute what you said. Who else had to draw this diagram on their mission? Do you remember it? Yeah. What's this yeah. diagram? Have we ever spoken about this, by the way, guys? Have we ever? Uh, Quaker, you didn't have the privilege of serving a mission. Uh, unfortunately, as a convert. However, have you seen this uh, graph before used in some Mormon lessons? Jeez, uh, your handwriting's the bird. It says write that? it's a triangle <laughs> that says God, family, and self. Can you describe it, Jonah? Yeah. So, so your relationship, your own relationship with your family, is always accompanied by God. You're not just their father. You are also a son of the father and they are God's children and you are steward over that family. And so it's, you're never in isolation. You're ne it's never just you and your wife. It's never just you and your kids. God is always there and you owe it to him to be a good steward and honest and honorable and to take care of, of, of these children that he has loaned to you. Well, also so that, you what know. happens, what happens in a triangle when you yourself have three points of this triangle, as you get closer to God, what happens yeah. to the triangle? It gets smaller. As yep, you get yep. even closer to God, what happens to the triangle? It gets smaller, and you also get closer to your family. One right, of the biggest right. fringe benefits of reading scripture is understanding that you are tied to something, not just your ancestors. You're part of a big chain. And what are you chained to? Are you chained to your car? Are you chained to your wealth? Are you chained to your, your consumer goods and products? No, you're chained to your family. It is proven 
that children who are raised in religious households, especially religions that have codified rites of passage, are more well-adjusted and have better relationships with their families. Jonah, you're big time into genealogy. It is proven that active members of the church who are youths who do their genealogy, what measurable quantifiers do they enjoy improvement on? Uh, let's see. Uh, almost everyone. Self-actualization, self-confidence, higher functioning families, uh, the more financially successful uh, everything across the board. It's the single greatest predictor of all the good stuff you want for your kids if you know your family history, which is emphasized very strongly in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So we're supposed to believe that the same religion that literally has a prophet get up and say that no success outside of the home can can't compensate for failure within the home is now turning around and saying, you need to go out there and make a bunch of money, as previously described. And oh, by the way, the good ones of you are the ones that neglect your families. <laughs> ludicrous <laughs> it, it's 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 factually false it's ludicrous and then for him to say like oh i never thought of that way but you know it's true that's how radicalization happens they read the half truths in the ces letter think they're full truths and don't realize they're three-quarter lies and then they start saying oh yeah you're right joseph smith did name jerusalem in the book of mormon after jerusalem in pennsylvania and Gosh, if he was going to fake it, fake something, you don't think he wouldn't fake it out of the Bible first? You know, like so mm. many of these accusations are so f just false on their face. I can't believe people believe them, but they're taken advantage of on 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 X Mormon subreddit and the CES letter and so on and so forth to all of a sudden think, yeah, you're right. Well, now that you do say it like that, I was abused and my mm. parents are horrible and they shouldn't see their children. Like Nathan Bigler, mm -hmm. who literally just got a membership in our chat, was bragging in our last live stream how he's so woke that he won't let his parents see their grandchildren because they're active members of the church. What a horrible and cruel thing to do to your children, Nathan. Yeah. That that is yeah. horrible. And you're bragging about it? Yeah. You read Rags the text. I didn't read the I didn't read the super chat. You're the one that read it. What 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 yeah. did it say? He said, My my parents can't see my kids because they're bigots, LOL. Classy, classy guy. Wow, great. Classy guy. My, I, really no. hope I really hope we don't Google this and it's like Nathan Bigler, son of two neo Nazis <laughs> <Yeah>. in <laughs> northern Idaho are like, Oh, well, he was telling the truth. <laughs> oh shoot. No, he he, 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 oh, he they actually are radicalists. <laughs> see, Garden, you can't you can't say that's terrible if you don't know they're not neo Nazis. Thank you for clarifying. No, Quaker. I did actually have to Google him because he was making some veiled threats that were I was pretty uncomfortable with and he was also naming addresses and naming like he, he, he was he was doing dog Box adjacent things that I didn't feel comfortable with, so I consulted mm. with some law enforcement, okay. and um, uh, in the investigation thereof, just came across some. He's given speeches in the Capitol about like, you know, why we have to uh, uh, um, that the state needs to do more to help trans kids or like support trans youth and uh, things like that. And he's been pretty on the record as being very vocal on woke scold things, you know. But um, enough about him. You know, let's just keep so moving on. Let's catch up on a couple super chats. Yeah. Kelton Christensen donates and says, sounds like his testimony, speaking of uh, Mississippi Nick, sounds like his testimony is still on the back of his parents and not his own personal relationship with Christ. Um, then I won't say that. Have... I don't know. That... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know then enough about him. Super chat from Zion's Camper, Luke Hansen, Zion's Camper channel out there on YouTube. Take it with a grain of salt. But a comment on your last live stream claimed that he in, was in their ward and was everything bad he accused them of being. Take well, a little grain of salt. That's but, just hearsay. So, yeah, we take then, it with two uh, grains of salt. And then Legalese donates, and he says he needs to act like an adult. He knew what he was doing on his mission was wrong, and he knows that what he's that he and he knows now that he's taking things out of context and outright lying. No more kid gloves for people like this. You know, that's a good point. This guy is not a little boy. This guy is a full-grown man. He can start acting like one. Llama Lord 07 says, I became an atheist at 14. I hated God in the church. I ate and drank the sacrament unworthily and can testify I was truly damned with hatred and found excuses to leave. Not saying he did this, but seems familiar. Active okay. now. Llama Lord, we're glad that you're hey, active hey, now. Hey, hey, that was intense. 14 year old, you, 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 you might have just. You, you might have just needed to go outside. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 14. I, I take like people's, okay, the, I don't mean to be dismissive, but I, whether it's LDS or like the evangelicals or whatever, like someone going through the early stages of puberty and massive hormone changes is making sh massive faith claims. Like I needed to be saved when I was like, dude, you're, you're, you're 14. Like we all remember 
that switch from when you're when you wear like basketball shorts every day to school and then one day you get back from summer break and you can't wear those basketball shorts anymore because <laughs> the senior girls in high school you go oh no i got it mom i need compression shorts and jeans every guy remembers that call we all remember that 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 quick trip to jc pennies okay so like when you're a 14 year old it can't take it easy take it easy <laughs> Dude, also, I, am, I I'm pretty lost right now. But liar, no, you're not. You know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> also, Latter Day Chad says the anti-Mormons helped me believe the church could be true. Seeing how much they lie made me give Joseph Smith a chance. Ooh, no, wait, ooh. dude, they don't lie. They they give you all the secrets uh, to a happy, fulfilling life. Remember, eat, drink, and mean Mary, and then we're gonna go to one hour twenty two seconds and fi- no, one hour twenty two minutes and fifty nine seconds. And one while you hour- find that, while you find that, Kevin Nelson says he donates six dollars and ninety nine Canadian cents, which is enough for about a gumball and a half. He says, "Eat, drink, and be merry" is the great ethic to teach to his kids. Face palm. Agreed. Okay, what's the timestamp there, Jackson? One minute, 22 seconds, and he said 59? It looks like we lost Oh, Jackson we lost One Jackson. hour, 22 minutes, and 59 seconds. One hour, 22 minutes, and 59 seconds. Here's 56. Go. No, let me let me answer okay, okay. it. Let me answer okay. it. I, I, I don't know that I ever thought that way. I just went. But the reasons <laughs> why were some future day of service. That's why I did it. Not because I aspired to be a mission president or no, I just wanted to do the right thing and to serve people who were less fortunate than us. And if I could do all of that properly, that would be the life I could hang my hat on. Mm. And now I just want to throw up when I think about it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's like a very disconnected person, like to your self experience. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. All right. Pause it. Pause it. <laughs> okay. All right. Bro, did you hear what he just said, Jonah? He just said, "I I wanted to do it because I wanted of some future day of service. He wanted to serve people, and if he could do that, that that would be a life he could hang his hat on. And looking at that back now, he he wants to throw up about thinking about that. And then Margie goes ahead and touts in. Uh, yeah, it's a very like what what does she say like a denial of the self self what uh, what the freak I, did I she say? I think he may have been referring to a calling. Like he wanted like service in the church. Like he was yeah, a, no, like chasing callings or gunning for a Do, do we need chair. to re-listen to this? Do we need to re-listen to this? No, no, that he got it exactly okay. right. He's saying that I, I did it because at some future date I wanted to serve and I wanted to have this authority to serve and now looking back I want to throw up. Well, gosh, I don't think that's, I mean, you should be happy you wanted to serve your fellow man. I don't think that, it's really weird. Something happens when you go Exmo anti more. you get really bad tattoos and start going to really bad tasting coffee shops and sugar house. And it's like Utah, like anti-Mormons are the weirdest breed of people because it's like they get this strange attitude where it's like, whatever the church said to do, I need to do the opposite The of opposite, it. yes. You know, and so it's like, it's okay to literally say like, look, I was in there, I was in it, even if, if I were to exit, I would be like, I was in there far too long than I should have been because I was really just kind of maintaining the last vestiges of a uh, a, a sense of community that I, I thought was based on a belief structure that I now no longer hold. But I, I was in it for a long time because, you know, the people were still good and we were doing some good things together. And, and, and now now I, I miss that part. That part was good. But, you know, this part over here is not. It's just this weird thing that happens. And, and this is why there is a difference between people that we will debunk and will go after behind the switchboard, right? Because it's one thing to say something's not for me anymore. None of us bring the smoke because you fell in love with a young woman. None of us none of us fault you for that. None of us fault you for, you know, disbelieving something, having a faith crisis, whatever, dude. We're all humans trying to, quote, figure it out. But when you start calling us brainwashed, when you start coming out with the cult tropes, when you start coming out with the abuse tropes, when you start coming out with the vagaries that you can't define with all of your, uh, with any kind of specifics, when you start saying that we're horrible and mean people that just spent an hour and a half making fun of you, but oh, I could only watch 20 minutes, which meant you really only watched two minutes and then made a snap judgment that you're now trying to just, you know, make up for on a live stream. No, when we call BS, all right, and we say prove it and you can't prove it, it makes me think you are dishonestly engaging in the first place. So, yeah, the, the best thing that McDonald's in Park City could do 
is to come out and say that Robert uh, uh, say that Prophet Russell M. Nelson eats Burger King. Yes, that's the best thing they could do. Everybody would flood to the McDonald's just to spite Russell M. Nelson. How dare he? Well, I don't like that's the worst. They want to believe everything the complete opposite. Of the church. If the church likes chocolate ice cream, they like vanilla ice cream. Yeah. And then the only other thing I will point out is that we just got another super chat uh, that um, from the last dispensation says, I think we all knew the bishop's debut would come. I got to hand it to him. He thought this out intensely. It's falling into line like clockwork. Next is a podcast. I don't know if he necessarily thought this all out ahead of time. Uh, Only he knows exactly how much planning went into this. I will say, though. That um, you read, uh, we're, we're helping finish the book of the, the the top 30 rules in the playbook of anti-Mormonism. And one of the rules that we mentioned before was got to live up to every negative stereotype, right? And the, the, the negative stereotype is rage quit online or even better from the pulpit. Get radicalized and or perfect your game in ex-Mormon subreddit. And then what? You know you've made it. You know you've made it in the North American ex-Mormon, anti-Mormon community when you get invited to the House of the Rising Sun to have your debut as as you are now crowned an official anti-Mormon in the pantheon of those of us who have sacrificed and gone before. Now, the Mormon Stories podcast. (laughs) Now, last dispensation, we get what you're saying, man. This guy is, he's an example. He's, he's, He's kind of just representative, right? Of what of what happens a lot and the arguments he's and you can see this is like real time. We're watching this guy deconstruct himself in real time, going in circles, contradicting himself, just like hearing John DeLynn put something out and going, Oh yes, and swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. We're watching this in real time. And I think it's instructive. I think that's why we're talking about this guy so much. And 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 if it if it is is giving him some kind of online clout, yeah, okay, well, whatever. But I think it's instructive for everybody to see how this process works, that there is a, a bag of 30 pieces of online reputation silver awaiting any one of us. Okay, Any the, one of us can, can claim it. The profit anyway. incentive, unfortunately, is there. We're going to burn through some, through some super chats and continue. Jack Norton says, so-and-so has been out since 2004, is still spending his Friday night in Ward Radio Chat. That's funny. He's deceased. <laughs> That's hilarious. And then um, we got another one. Uh, Latter-day Skeptic. Oh, that's cute. Forest's here. What's up, Forest? They wow. Oh no, it's nine. T- yeah, sorry. No, um, the the babysitter. Does she know you're online right now? She must have given him the password <laughs> to the computer. Um, it's fine. Anyway, don't you think it's important to watch the full three hour video before responding rather than out of t- context clips? It's actually called a reaction video in which you save it for the show, uh, Forest. Uh, it's called reaction content online where you react, and in order to get the most authentic original answer, you react to something you maybe have not seen before. Okay, uh, just because we internet better than you doesn't mean that we're doing it wrong or unethically. Ooh, and do you savage. feel do you feel anything that we have said, Jackson, is taken out of context yet? No, and I would encourage every single person to go and listen to this full three-hour thing because it was one of the, like I said, one of the most faith-strengthening things because I could see... <laughs> If you see, uh, dude, there was this talk I read uh, on my mission called The Fourth Missionary by Lawrence E. Corbridge, and he kind of talks about four different types of missionaries, but you could also do the four different types of members. And if we look back through what he's kind of explained his journey has been in the church, right? He was a missionary that, you know, made out with a teenager, didn't keep the, the mission rules, like he was trying to fit this mold, but kind of uncomfortable, waiting till he could just get out of it and do his own thing, right? And then he goes in, gets married, and then he's talking about how he's just like trying to fit into this Mormon mold. He, he ignores his family, you know, just so he can, you know, be a mission president, right? He he says he didn't specifically to do that, but that's what most members well, do. Um. Also, I, I was just gonna say in, in regards to um. To, to Forrest's comment here of Latter-day Skeptic. I also encourage everybody to go watch Latter-day Skeptic. You know what I'm saying? Go watch his content. Uh, check him out. Um, it's a little corobor. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's fine. Um, in fact, I would like to donate to Forrest. Um, I've got an extra copy of the Pirate Bible. Also, by the way, guys, I've never said this, but months ago they gave me a discount code, Ward Radio 15 and you get 15% off on the Pirate Bible. But I'm going to donate this to um to Forrest because I don't have a phone book that he can sit on 
while he's trying to podcast at his mom's computer. You know what I'm saying? And and he's 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 a diminutive dude. You know, very cool. I I have nothing but love and respect for my friend Forrest here. But but Forrest, that Jackson camera's really coming high. On the show. Look at Jackson. You know, he's that's, completely that's really like high. <laughs> And I just, just if you need something to sit on, Forrest, I got a pirate Bible for you. If you don't have a phone book, you know what I'm saying? Forrest, don't feel bad. He's taller than everyone in the world. Don't feel bad. We're all midgets compared to Carden. Yeah, so anyway, keep going, brother. Yeah, keep I once going. saw Carden hit his head on a, on a, on a road stoplight. <laughs> well, and the door frame. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it happens a lot, man. Anyway, keep going, keep going. Yeah, Next no, time and then stay. we and then we see here where essentially we learn here from what he says that living to serve others is bad, and then you need to focus on yourself. She said it's a denial of the self experience to do that to live to serve someone to to serve others. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like he's like uncomfortable in this mold, trying to fit in. But eventually, just waiting till the day that he doesn't have to do it anymore. Hit what do it. you have to say, Quaker. Quaker? To be fair, to be fair, I think what she may mean is, you know, it, it, let's be. If fair. you lose, let's be fair. Your identity in trying to please those around you too much, it is a denial of the self. I don't know yes. if she means that. I don't know. I'm I, I, I follow enough uh uh hot mom influencers who do like the like let me tell you about my life. I'm into it. I follow enough of them where I kinda pick up the language. So it may have meant that, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just you know Yeah. So I, I will say it is not requisite for a man to run faster than he has strength. I was gonna for. say that exact same scripture. Bro. I read your freaking mind card on. Yeah. Okay. It is not requisite that a man run faster than he has strength. And I also do have faith in Jesus Christ and the words that he said when he said, he who shall lose his life shall find it. And I strongly believe that living for the service of other people, while not like obviously neglecting to have a relationship with your family, like sh showing that those two things are mutually exclusive and acting like you can't, you know, do one without, you know, sacrificing you know, all attention to your family and not remembering your kid's upbringing. Like, I just think that's a super extreme and I'm not on board with it. Does okay, that clarify kind of what that I'm clarifies it. We only got 12 minutes left here really fast. Elmer, you super chat and you get your um, uh, timestamp going one. says you skip my uh, last super chat dudes. This is the living culture versus the living gospel checking boxes, living la vida, lukewarm. Jesus going to spit you out of his mouth. Uh, ultra crepidarian troglodytes. That was some really big terminology that I don't understand. But if you're trying to say there's a difference between the living culture and the living gospel, I'm right there with you. And if there is some suburban that is creeping in mixed with scripture that is focusing a little bit uh, more on outward appearances than self-actualization. That's yeah, of course, of course, that is not uh, that is not gospel oriented. That is not Christ like. And then we got another five uh, memberships donated by Be Fit to Be Fit. Thank you very much, Be Fit to Be Fit. Um, our ward librarian is going to welcome you all into the chat after I read Diamond Dave's uh, super chat here saying if we had... Uh, if we had a mass excommunications, this wouldn't have happened. Just saying. Well, you know, we try and be very, very, we believe in mercy. God is a um, God of mercy as well as justice. And when we are the ones that are besmirched, we demand justice. And when we're the ones besmirching, we demand mercy. And we do believe that the reason why uh, the Sanhedrin was wise and Jesus Christ was called rabbi was because back then you had to be somebody who was married and who was over the age of 30 and had enough worldly wisdom to understand how to balance both the tenets of mercy and justice so um yeah i don't know about uh that specific 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 prescription but um thank you very much for the super chat diamond dave what's the next time stamp jackson paul of the stick of okay Joseph. so since we have limited time i dude i have a ton more but let's let's pick the best ones right so he said in his second video on reddit that we were all brainwashed and that we didn't know the truth right okay so then john delin presses him on what truth claims he had issue with oh we and, finally uh, get specifics yes and yes so, Let's go to two hours, 25 minutes, and six seconds. Two hours, 25 minutes, and six seconds. Okay, so here's two hours, 25 minutes, and six se seconds. Now, this is my third time doing it. It's probably going to give us a commercial. Ah, I knew it, it was going to give us a commercial, so hold on. I'm going to let the commercial go in three, two, one, skip. Here we go. Um, but Joseph Smith practiced polygamy, yes. 
and this is hard for me because recently I've had to contend with Joseph in my deconstruction. And uh, I revered him as if he was God. Whoa. Truly. That no man had ever lived the life Joseph Smith lived. Dude, who needs Adam God theory when you got Joseph Smith God confusion, man? Do I keep going? Keep going, keep going. Okay, wow, dude. Praise Except to Jesus. the man, right? Yeah, praise to the man. Sure. Yeah. By the way, a folk song put to a sc Scottish battle hymn by a bunch of Scottish uh, uh, converts who just had appreciation for the restoration is far from the deification of a man right? to compete with the Trinity? Like, what? Right? Okay, Here, look, I like playing. Michael Jordan. I like Michael Jordan, but I ain't burning no candles to the guy, all right? Keep going, you say? Keep going, keep going. Okay. So polygamy was a huge hang-up. And then it was historicity of, of uh, the origin of the Book of Mormon. Doesn't add up. How so? No, they're Asians. They come from Asian descent. Who? The Native American Indians. And the Book of Mormon DNA claims. DNA proves it. The Book of Mormon claims that they came from Jerusalem and that they were white. And as they became more wicked, their skin darkened. So uh. Mormonism teaches racism as well. Okay, oh, all right, all right, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 wait, you're about wait. to say something that's going to trigger you even more. Just let it okay, let go okay, a little bit more. Okay, okay, okay. That I love. And I had biases even while I was friends with them because of my Mormon upbringing. And it doesn't. Mormon is, Mormonism is subtle when it comes to racism. They don't. They don't out it. They actually fight against it, but they're subtly actually pushing that underneath all of that in their scriptures. Okay, pause it there. Um, okay, who wants to take this one look, first, Quaku? I, okay, so <laughs> again, I have not seen this full interview, so I am operating got a little bit of ignorance, but. They're out of, and I know this guy's in Mississippi, but I'm, I'm not sure if he went to school in Utah or what. Out of Utah, there is a specific personality type you find among those who do door-to-door -door sales. And that specific, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in shape, I'm confident, and I'm selling you something, like aura and vibe and cadence, <laughs> I know very well. And... The part where he started talking about Joseph Smith and it, it, it felt like he was trying to sell me an idea, okay? And I have held my tongue on making really a comment about him or his beliefs or his moral character. Only the things he's saying and, and, and a couple of jokes about him being handsome. That felt fake to me. The second thing. There is no way. He came up with that opinion by reading the Book of Mormon unless he skimmed it and didn't actually read it. Because one, one but, but okay, without even going into full apologetic mode, one, the Book of Mormon is not claiming that the natives came from Jerusalem unless you've read the Book of Ether which is starting in Babylon, which is a group of everybody in one location. If you're claiming the Book of Mormon is making the case that Lehi and Nephi were the first people of the American continent, you didn't read the Book of Mormon. Second, if you're saying the Book of Mormon is actually making the claim that white Jews are turning into Negroes, <laughs> like sub-Saharan Africans, like they came over looking like Jackson... And then, but here I am. Uh, it isn't saying that either. So if you're jumping from natives to black people, racism, you, you're not reading the same book. These inconsistencies seem to be the ex-Mormon talking points put in the CES letter and Godmakers and things like that. But you can't get to that conclusion while reading the Book of Mormon unless you're just very stupid. Yeah, and by like, the way, I'm not now, trying to be a jerk. I, You've got okay, to be dumb. To think to, or or to, or or you've just skimmed over ex Mormon Reddit and you've picked that out as one of their are you already talking points and you were yeah, radicalized so, online. So, so get the fifty thousand foot view. See what's happening here, right? So it's like 
Something happened. No one knows. Remember, nobody knows what is motivating this resignation or this release. We have no idea what's happening, right? All we have is one side of the story. It starts off as this. Remember that in, in his resignation speech that he forced everybody to listen to at the pulpit so magnanimously, so bravely. He said uh, uh, some things that were uh, I couldn't do morally. I didn't feel comfortable, you know, doing in the church or whatever. And then they go through this this retroactive this blender, this cocktail, this shrimp gumbo of all the reasons that you could have a problem with the church and just starts picking up things. And then uh, uh, Joseph Smith polygamy and then uh, uh, the provenance of the Book of Mormon. And you're like, well, which is it? Which is it? Okay, because there's not a thousand reasons to do something. There's one good reason to do something. You left the church because of, of something. But he just like throws this just garbage heap of Can stuff. Can at I? you and it's like what do you, it's like the, uh, the line from Zoolander where it says last night when I was sandwiched between the two Finnish dwarves and the Maori tribesmen that's when I realized the book of Abraham was translated incorrectly you're like wait what hold on you were already halfway out the door and now you're re-remembering so, some reasons why and that's really why it was the historicity of the book of Mormon that really got me out of here and you're like wait that wasn't what it was yesterday Okay. They're, they're, they're rewriting their memory and it's just ludicrous it's such a good case study in insanity okay um does anybody else not notice a glaringly obvious thing here that I was just forced, not forced, but I just watched an anti-Mormon podcast of four white people calling out <laughs> the only podcast that's strutting an actual African-American and is talking to three dudes who have all stamped their passports and gone to foreign countries in order to serve love or document the people there within, you know, the past 12 months, you know, and that are all bilingual. Like everybody except for Kwaku here is bilingual. And we're supposed to believe we're the racists. Can, well, oh, well, Kwaku I, speaks Tartarian. Yeah. Like, yeah, Kwaku speaks Tartarian. Also, I, I mean, th there, there's two points I want to make here. But and, you're and, racist. Well, this is, and again, this is this is very interesting to me. But you're racist. Uh, I can't. I can't be. He's got a point. Well, He's got a point. No, no, no. I mean, this is two two important points to make. One, Native Americans would not like being told, "Hey, you're Asians." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's not. I ain't gonna fly at any. I I've been to Apache, Oklahoma, and it's not for scientific. a couple of times. It's not scientific. Yeah, no, it's not. And it's saying it's been proven by the DNA. That that is that is a very rudimentary the current, sentence. The current shows American it. Indians that we have are a replacement of a people group that existed long before and was most likely wiped out. Oh, also, there isn't one Native American genetic. It's group. not a model. Yeah, yeah, I mean it, that shows a tenuous grasp on this subject. Second. Take what he's saying and say the Book of Mormon is saying this whole race narrative. Take that to its logical conclusion. He's saying that white Jews came over and returned black. Are you making the claim that the original Native Americans then are black people? Because that's black Hebrew Israelite doctrine, dude. Yeah. They would agree with that. You see how, like, like this is the problem with, with these mainstream ex-Mormon arguments. Get an original one. When you pick the mainstream ones, you end up being bent into this bizarre position where everyone's like, wait, like, like, wait. So am I making the claim that Joseph Smith was saying that white Jews came over and turned into black people so the so the inhabitants of America were actually black natives? Is that is that because that's literally like Nation of Islam, black Hebrew Israelite teaching. And he doesn't actually think that the book is saying that. So so I doubt he legitimately got that belief from the Book of Mormon because take he's a smart guy. Take that to its next conclusion. Yeah. No, this is a, it's a silly caricature that nobody believes Mormons or ex Mormons. This is why we doubt what you're saying right now. I didn't doubt the abuse stuff. I'm not doubting that uh, story of how you fell in love with your wife. I'm not doubting the anxiety or any of that. I'm not doubting there was some chomo in your ward who needs to get roughed up. I'm not doubting any of that. This I'm doubting. It doesn't hold up to snuff. Okay, I just have a question. What's a chomo? Is that like a cholo mixed with uh, like a, a, a homo sapien? It means, it's, it's, or with it, a it's TikTok <laughs> slang for child molester. Oh, wow. Mm. Did I just get Z Gen Z slapped with some super slang? Okay. Chomo. <laughs> chomo. I've never heard that one before. I was like, That's okay. Epic. 
That's hip. So, hey, um, um, any last Super Chats you guys want to get out of your system, give them now because we're unfortunately already into overtime. we got five minutes left. We're going to do another one of your timestamps, maybe another two timestamps if we can get can through it. Can you turn it. off the AC? It's freezing in here. Oh, dude. I turned it on for you because usually you get hotter, bro. No, I get Sorry. colder. No, I need the heat, dude. Turn it up. You want me to turn Please? it up? Okay. Yeah, no, I need heat. So give Stay focused, John. lads. We need to, a couple more. Okay. John Baxter says, I've seen no evidence that he was actually a bishop ever. Okay, uh, don't just, say okay. that. He, he, <laughs> he was. He was a bishop. Yeah. And just FYI, bishop. guys, like, uh, it's it's very hard to keep up with the super chats. There's a lot of people. There's almost Usually a thousand Brad people it. watching this, and so it's difficult to keep up with the super hey, chats. If they're negative, if they're negative or they're derogatory, skip them. And if they're funny, highlight them. But yeah, let's burn through them really fast. And if you feel you have to skip one, skip it. But we're doing our best to read them all. Go. I think I think we're we're I, I unfortunately can't go back to to whatever we've missed. So that's as. Good as we're going to do. Okay. So. Well, I'll go back and look for him. Give us the next time stamp. Uh, uh, da- next Daisy time. D says, read Grant Round's super chat. I can't see Grant Round's super chat. Bruh. Okay. Is this one says, Jeremiah 88 mentions the Deuteronomy. Oh, wait. No, no. Grant Round's super chat. Okay. I'm going all the way live. Uh, read Grant Round's super chat. I'm going up really fast. John just Baxter put it in the chat, said, Grant. We'll read it. Just I've, put it in the chat. I've right seen. Now. We'll oh, wait, no, <laughs> I know <sorry>. Grant. <laughs> oh, you well, I know Grant. So here's December. We're watching in real time how he is changing Christ for John DeLynn as a role model for his life. I don't know if I'd say that, but I do say that um, there there is a, a false idol of there, there's a whole new religion on ex Mormon subreddit and on in the CES letter, and you can get radicalized in believing a completely different faith. You don't leave the gospel when you go this route. You just get a stranger, newer, weirder, more cruel and cynical version. So Latter-day Chad says Native Americans in the eastern United States have DNA like haplogroup X and other DNA native of the Middle East. Um, was East Asian answer? You know, I can't read the rest of Latter-day Chad's. But yes, he does correctly mention haplogroup X. And also there's Austro-Melanesian DNA in very strange places in Central America. Literally Australian Aboriginal DNA in the middle of Central America. And it's like, holy smoke, how did that happen? Um, Kelton Christensen sounds like his testimony is still on the back of his parents and not his own oh, personal you already relationship read that. with Jesus Christ. Okay, cool. Llama Lord. Uh, can't even, yeah, we were all cut up on Super Chats. Yeah, yeah we're, we're cut all up. cut up on Super Chats. So anyway, keep going. Timestamp, my man. Yeah, so guys, like I said, I encourage you to go watch the whole thing because it is very enlightening. But I think... For the last one, for the last little bit that uh, we'll give you two. We'll give you two. We'll give you two. Okay, give me two. Okay, good. Okay, adjustment made. Go to two hours forty six minutes and thirty seconds. Two hours forty six minutes and thirty seconds. Okay, here we are. Two hours forty six minutes and twenty six seconds, and I get the Shen Yin commercial that is going all over Los Angeles, as well as. the new oh the new dance recital that's in the Amundsen yeah okay here we go I'm not there yet I'm like I'm not there yet so he would try and talk to you about his problems with the church history (laughs) and And some would would line up but some I'm like oh I just I don't even know I'll have to you know have to figure that out on my own but Um, you didn't want to hear it necessarily yeah sometimes yeah okay it was bad like it's been nonstop for it's nonstop for me probably like eight or nine months very like Go, go, go. I'm up 4.30 like most mornings going. I can't turn it off. His brain does not turn off. He's, so you're saying you're it's been a holding. hot flame for eight or nine months for you? At yeah. least, yeah. Oh, yeah. So have you been in a bit of a rabbit hole deconstruction? Yeah. Just sort of, yeah. Every day, all day. Yeah. And for That's me, I'll even I tell him, I'm like, put it away because I'm good at that. I'm like, yeah. put it away and do something else. Like, I'll put it away. I'll go outside. I'll connect with music. I'll connect with the kids. But yeah. it's like, no, I got to just tunnel through. <laughs> yeah, I want to rip the band aid off. Kind yeah. of person. Well, I'm just as as someone who spent 45 years as a Mormon, and I'm thinking about how I look at the bishop every Sunday when I show up. He's presiding, he's getting up, he's calling people, sustaining people, he's leading the ward. I can't imagine what it would be like for that bishop to be in a full blown yeah. faith crisis for eight or nine months in the dark night of the soul. Yes, and yet every so Sunday much. he's showing up. As if everything's so great. Pause it. Okay. Hey, so Boo-hoo. we oh. say we see here that he was constantly he was fully immersed in essentially everything critical to the church, right? And yeah. I have myself looked into 
I wouldn't say all because there's so many, but a lot of critical things to the church. But you know what I didn't do? I didn't put down my freaking Book of Mormon, and I didn't get off my knees and stop praying to my Father in Heaven. And you see here that he fully immersed himself, and he couldn't put it down because he was only now looking through that lens of criticism towards the church. And I'll tell you what, if you yourself read the CES letter, and you don't read it simultaneously with the Book of Mormon and pray to God, you are going to leave the church. Because if you only look with one eye open at church history and you don't continue to read and pray, you will leave the church. And, and we see... Oh, I was yeah. just, I was, sorry, I thought you were ending there. I was going to say, this is true with any conspiracy theory, okay? I'm not going to step on your toes here, Kwaku, okay? Mm -hmm. But if all I ever do is read how the moon landing was fake... And how, you know, that was actually one of Stanley Kubrick's props in the background. And, you know, I, I, I just I love that they use the term rabbit hole because that's what online conspiracies are called is going down the rabbit hole. Right. You read enough of a conspiracy without any other conflicting information and you will be radicalized into believing that the moon landing was fake. Now, by the way, with that said, the moon landing was faked. But um, no, I'm not <laughs> totally kidding. But um, yeah, yeah. You think they do you think they really yeah. <laughs> brought a tinfoil wrap dune buggy? And zoomed around the moon and called the president with a <laughs> landline phone. Who took that phone? picture of the Earth, huh? How'd they call him on a landline yeah, for the moon, they, huh? How'd they get a picture of it leaving? That's was crazy. that was that AT&T, huh? So anyway. All right, all right, all right. So Super Chats. Uh, uh -huh. The Cooking Gamer says, weren't Jews Middle Easterners? They weren't white, LOL. I love the style of video, guys. It's better than the political stuff you do sometimes. All right. Uh, we don't do political stuff. Latter-day Chat says, Native Americans in the Eastern United States have DNA haplogroup X and other DNA native to the Middle East. Uh, ancient Answers covered it and jeremy Cherpesky, i am just i feel thrilled that i'm honored to read this super chat because it's fantastic uh, i yeah. really want uh, to extend nick some grace but then he pulls out this stuff and it makes it hard john delin is the anti-mormon ambulance chaser oh oh uh, that's so, a rough so one. my my friend yes, who is good. he isn't he's is actually he's native american um he's from the res member of the church went inactive for a while is now active in the church again, full on believer. We've had extensive conversations about this subject and it's more patronizing according to him to natives when ex Mormons say, Oh yeah, the book of Mormon's fake because Jewish people didn't come over in boats. That, that is true. These are all Asians from their perspective. And I'm trying to be, you know, I'm obviously trying to be humble about this. Their perspective is, there is not one group that came over to Europe to create ancient Europeans. There's not one group on any continent that just, they came here and that's where they all spring from. You're, the, me, Southern Europe looks very different than, than people in Finland, who are different than the Brits, who are different than people in, 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 in Eastern Europe close to Russia. Okay? It's, it's diverse. Ex-Mormons have this idea that everybody... All of the Native Americans are of one genetic ancestry. And when they say this, oh no, they're descendants of Asians, it's not true. The most west point of Africa and the most east point of South America aren't that far apart. Everybody came here. The Vikings came here. Asians came here. Africans came here. Jews yes. came here. Yes. Phoenicians. Everybody came here just like everybody went everywhere. And if one group of Jews came and recorded their history and, and their battles and how their group of Jews mixed with natives and, and became un, one strain of natives, suddenly that means, JK, everybody Asian. It's nonsensical. It's crazy. It is not historical. They never l link these DNA studies. There's evidence that Egyptians came over to South America. People oh. in India, that's why the architecture of the South American pyramids matches Indus Valley Pyramid architecture. Well, you forgot one. Who? The Anunnaki. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's like that argument that I know if, 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 if Nick here is trying to be racially progressive, dump that ex-Mormon argument from ex-Mormon subreddit. Those people, they don't talk about minorities good on that subreddit anyway. Oh, okay? that's true. That is absolutely, unequivocally 
wrong. Ex-Mormon rule number 12 is they don't protect minority groups. They perpetuate them and traffic in their misery. They're so, just a bunch I, of dumb know, Asians who didn't have a will and couldn't build smite. Yeah, like, that's it's literally I just wanna, the Jeremy Reynolds narrative. I know this guy's only going to watch 60 seconds of this uh, live stream and then whine about how we made fun of him the whole time. So if this happens to be that 60 seconds, I just want to say to this guy and his wife, don't listen to us and don't listen to John DeLynn. Listen to your kids. Your kids are in a very precarious place right now. Just be really good parents. Focus on your kids for a couple of years. And if after that you want to become an Exmo celebrity or if you want to come back to the church or whatever you want to do, fine. But there are kids involved with this family that is leaving the church and their community and all their family and all their values and the entire foundation that they have. And that's what everybody should be very concerned about right now is that these people have children and the children are going to, are going to, you know, without any foundation, they're going to end up like Forrest. Yeah. Oh, savage. Um, But Hey, we've got, if, if that does happen, we've got extra pirate Bibles they can sit on. So um, Celtic Christian said, there's only so much you can deconstruct until you have nothing left to stand on. Truly no independent thought happens when you get to that point. Yes, deconstruction is a word that they fell in love with. And honestly, it just descends into nihilism and chaos. And it's not a good thing for the human soul. So I wouldn't brag about it. Um, Latter-day Chad says, a study showed Cherokee to have more Hebrew DNA than the average American Jew. And nobody can agree then on how it happened. Uh, Seneca Avenue DNA. Okay, well, we're not going to get into a whole genetic argument here uh, that uh, pits the Heartlanders against the Mesoamerican people and then make this all of a sudden the battleground for everything going in online about the geographic yeah. models. But thank you very much, Latter-day Chad, for the super chat. And Diamond Dave says, Quaku is right. Europeans are very diverse and none of us want to be associated with the French. <laughs> and JD France said, uh, so did this guy agree to 1v1 with this guy or no? Oh, so did Cardin agree to 1v1 with this guy or no? Sure, I'll debate this guy anytime. I mean, if he wants to say, debate me, bro, online, sure, I'll debate him. Um, that toehold stuff, a little bit dicey. You know what I'm saying? I'll have to have Jackson around for that one to to pry his toes off. You I know? think he said heel hold. Oh, sorry, he, that's what he I said meant. heel hold, but yeah. it's been hilarious. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I said to, I've kept on saying toe hold, hold, haven't I? Yeah, that's a that's totally different word. Him. That's I worked at a rock climbing wall. Like I used to work at a rock climbing wall okay, here in Los fair. Angeles, and so yeah, you're right. You have to get that toe hold. Oh, that's so funny. I've been messing. Yeah, up the that toe thing's time. now kind of weird. Yeah. We yeah. should have corrected you earlier, <laughs> but now you look like a weirdo, Gordon. Well, yeah. it's it's all yeah, right. It's what? No, and he didn't say an arm bar. What was the thing he said he wanted to get me in? It's a choke hold and a heel and a heel hold. A, a chokehold and a yeah. heel. I think did he say heel lock? I think he said heel lock or chokehold or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I don't know. You Anyways, know yeah, keep going. Scary. So, uh, so just tr- just a uh, perspective on that. I just think that'd be super boring, Carton. If you did a one on one, like there's nothing about this guy that feels unique. It feels like this is the most generic Xmo it is story basic, that there is. Yeah, it is yeah. basic, bro. So yeah. anyway, um, so if if I only get one more timestamp. There, there's at least two more that are so delicious. Okay, two. Just two. Fast. Oh, Let's do it. Okay, fast. just fast. All right? Okay. It, it, I'm not the one slowing this thing down. It, it, I, okay. I'll just say Be- that. Better than what you've got so far? Wow. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay, this one. We've this got one a lot is... of concurrent viewers, and the viewership has only been increasing, so fine. We'll, yeah. we'll okay. let you do your thing. This, this one, he kind of tells the last two things that set him off before he, boom, decided he's going to resign. Okay? Okay, these are the it, last two. What are they? Hit me. Okay, so go to two hours and 52 minutes. Okay, two hours even. and 52 minutes exactly? Yes. Okay. It's like it's like three minutes, but it, it's all good stuff. It's okay. all good stuff. Here we go. Boom. And then for the ward, it's really it's oh, really please. a catch-22 that, that, that's horrific. So there were two things that occurred in the last maybe six weeks of my service. One, a young woman came to me to tell me about more masturbation. And I, I stopped her before she even finished. I said, you don't get to come to me ever again to tell me about any of this. Mm-hmm. You're perfectly fine. You're trying to figure out who the flip you are. Mm-hmm. You didn't do anything wrong. And I kept worrying someone else was going to call the executive secretary and set up an appointment to tell me that kind of stuff again. And I couldn't do it again. I couldn't do it. I'm a tough guy, y'all. Like, yeah. But 
my heart can't take that. Number one, two, a man came 78 years old and just battled prostate cancer. 30 years, 30 plus years prior, he had an affair. He had been rebaptized maybe a decade or more ago. But because he wouldn't write a letter to his ex-wife and apologize, they wouldn't restore his blessings. Hmm. And this man thought he was going to die and not be good enough to make it to the highest degree of the celestial kingdom in Mormonism is heaven. They were holding this over this man's head. Mm -hmm. And he wept, 78 years old, wept with me the pain that he's been through. Well, I said, well, that's going to end today. I'm calling the stake president, and we're going to have your blessings restored. I don't care about a letter. I don't care what previous people have said. This is happening. Stake president's on board. Here's the problem. There's a paperwork I have to fill out. And in that paperwork, it asks detailed questions of what they did 30-plus years ago. Wow. wow. And I, I called the stake president and said, I refuse. I texted him. I, said, I sent a screenshot, and I said, I refuse to participate in this. No man should have to rehash those things to somebody who doesn't even know about it. I Wait, so his wife didn't know that he had cheated on her? Uh, on him? No, Clyde, this is a great example. This is a great example. He has no idea what happened 30 years ago. He wasn't in the disciplinary council. He doesn't know what the stake president knows, but he decides that he has the true gnosis and can pass judgment. And, but but if and this was done reverse, wait, wait, if Great this was, example. okay, hold on. If this was done in reverse, we'd be calling him a patriarch that was letting a guy get away with adultery. What if there's some woman there that's expecting alimony, 30 years worth of back payments? Be, what if he's a, like, what? Yeah, well, no one I knows. Real, I've never heard the church ever in my entire history saying, oh, hinging upon one letter of just an apology. Look, dude, I've got cancer. I have nothing. I have nothing but sympathy for somebody else who has cancer. I take a chemotherapy pill that keeps me alive every day, okay? It my daughter. What'd you it makes say? Makes me hangry. Makes me hangry, yeah. It makes him hangry. Yeah. My daughter had cancer. I lived in Children's Hospital of Los Angeles for freaking nearly a year, okay? With just a bunch of other families battling pediatric cancer. Let me tell you, there's not a person out there that... First off, is all it took was a letter. I'd write any letter to anybody to apologize for all the stupid things I've done in my life, especially if it was 35 years ago. So, so I doubt that another good-souled human being wouldn't have a problem just apologizing to another good-souled human being, especially if they've been through the freaking just grinder that is cancer. And second off, if this were done in reverse and you were to say, I wasn't going to make that man apologize to the wife that he cheated on because of my wise decision, that's the very definitionary definition of patriarchy we're accused of all the time. Can I, I want to counter this story with a story that John Lynch told me okay. when we were doing This Is The Show when John Lynch was a bishop. Yeah. And I, this is one of my favorite stories. He had this really old woman, like 78-year-old woman, like the same age as this guy, in her ward, and she said... I haven't been in the temple in 30 years. And he's like, why haven't you been in the temple in yeah, 30 dude, years? What? It's like, well, um, I've had, I felt guilty because I had an affair. I slept with someone 30 years ago. I never repented. My you know, husband died a couple years ago. And so I haven't taken the sacrament or gone to the temple in 30 years because I've been guilty for that long. Oh, girlfriend. And, and John Lynch said, he he, he takes out the temple recommend paper and said, "Well, I'm excited to tell you that your repentance process has been finished." And yeah. He wrote her temple <laughs> recommend right then and there. Okay, so so what that showed was humility. She's like, "Look, I'm old. I'm sorry about what I did." Like, Thirty years that, that you you repented plenty enough. They're always co-opting other churches' scandals. That's like uh, anti-Mormon rule number like fourteen or fifteen. Jonah, help me out with here. They're always trying to co-opt other churches' scandals. There is a purity culture problem in many North Evangelical faiths, and I think it is corrosive to family formation, and I think it is counterintuitive to the gospel and its message of uh, uh, of sexual purity. In regards to the masturbation thing, look, it's one thing to say to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life eternal, and to say. 
look, we have sexual sexual ethics that say, you know, we really should not be engaged in uh, sexual activity out of marriage and before it. And that does include masturbation. At the same time, there's not a single person in this live stream that won't admit that's a freaking parking ticket in our faith. Okay, nobody's giving you a moving violation for that. You ain't getting denied no insurance, all right? And, and like, like, you don't even have to, even in the most heinously strict sexual ethics book on the planet, The Miracle of Forgiveness, Spencer W. Kimball said, eh, it's not really a grievous crime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like... I, I I can't believe that this is one of those new things where like gaslighting was the big word they started using in 2019 and for the next couple of years that was the big accusation. The church is gaslighting us. The church is gaslighting us. Now all of a sudden I'm getting all these strange stories about like I was forced to confess this thing and told that like I was condemned and only one step away from the gallows for having done the M word once. I just, I don't know. Also, can I say, look, look, and this is a story. I have permission to tell it. I'm leaving out names and locations. It is the f one of the funniest repentance stories. <laughs> this is one of the funniest because it's sim. It's very similar to what this guy was talking about. Okay, um, there's a person I know. He's a bishop. Okay, similar. A teenage young girl comes to him and talks about like I've been masturbating. Okay, M wording. We said yes, it too many sorry, times. M wording. In the, in the and he was like, ah, uh, look, like. No, no, no neighborhood dad wants to be in alone in a room with a teenage girl talking. He's like, ah, okay, you know, it's fine. Please, you're, you're, don't, I don't, you don't need to repent for that. It's okay. Okay. That night, he's like, he's been there forever. He gets a knock on the door from the mother. She opens the door and she was like, what did you talk about with my daughter? And he's freaking out because he's like, oh crap, did I say something wrong? She's like, uh, she told me a little bit about the M word and I just, I said, don't worry about it. Okay, please. And she goes, no. Did she tell you that she used our t our debit card and ordered vibrators <laughs> from Amazon with our debit card? Like five or six? And he's like, oh, uh, okay. That is why the mom sent her in to talk about it because she thought she had a problem. So that story right there is like actually hilarious. Shouldn't be funny, but it's objectively funny. And it's like <laughs> you didn't punish her enough. You know what? He, and he's like, "Oh, look, please. This is a weird family problem. I want nothing to do with this. Please leave my office, lady." Okay, but but stories like this, you often find that there's usually now there are outliers of like really just uncomfortable situations, but oftentimes more than not, there's always some other wacky stuff that's going on when you send a you know like I'm just I'm saying. I, I, I'm not I, taking this guy fully at his word. I would it's want to know more before I believed someone that has been saying a lot of things that have already just been recycled tropes from online radical websites. Yeah, yeah. So, and can I can I offer a little? Uh, so I've 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 been I've been on the high a uh, stake high council with uh, and uh, a sat on stake high council before, and been in disciplinary councils before. I've served in bishoprics. I'm in a bishopric now. Just to give people a, a little perspective here, okay? Everybody in that council swears to high heaven that they will not divulge what's going on, that they won't go on a podcast and tell everybody what's happening. Even you, you don't tell anybody what went on in those councils. It's very sacred, and everybody there is is praying and hoping beyond hope that that person repents and comes back, okay? Yeah. This is an unfair fight. You can walk out of that thing and you can say, this is what happened. And the stake president said this. The bishop said da, 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 da. And you can say anything that you want to say. And all the other men in that council have sworn that they're not going to do it. So this is a completely unfair fight. You can say anything that you want. I wrote that stake president and I said, I won't do that because I, uh, the stake president can't come out and give his side of the story. All we have is what John DeLynn excels at. And that is, Mormon insinuations. All we have is this hearsay, one side of the story because the other side keeps its word and considers these things sacred and won't come out and fight back the same way that, that this guy is spreading rumors and insinuation around. We won't do it. So we're always at a disadvantage because we believe these things are yeah, sacred. That's so, happened to my family. That's totally happened to my family. And these people say cruel things online that you just know for a fact are just not true and you're just caught in this millstone where it's like, okay, do I literally have to, you know, defend myself? Because now, 
Like when you come out and you say, oh, the Mormon church is totally homophobic because my ex relation came out and was treated poor. It's like, no, I know that's factually not true. I had pushed back in my own family. I literally said, you name one person. We had this huge family blow up in my family where uh, all of a sudden one of my family members started posting all this heinous anti Mormon stuff, all of this, oh, they're homophobic, this and that. And I, I literally, like it caused this, this firestorm, but I said, I call BS. You name one person that rejected our mutual, this relation. You name one person that rejected, let's call him Steve, when he came out. You've indicted an entire faith, so you better be able to find at least one. Couldn't do it. Not his best friend who was Mormon, not his family that had 64 members living all within a quarter mile of him that were having Sunday dinners with him, not, not, uh, his, um, not his young men advisor, not a stake president, not his bishop, not a single person rejected him. They wouldn't go on record naming one single person that rejected him, yet you're going to indict the entire faith like, no, I call BS and somebody needs to step up and be an adult in the room and say like, no, this, this, this is a trope that is getting recycled. You know, last one, last time sp stamp. Uh, We're going to go to the last time stamp. Just let it play like 10 more seconds. Oh, just this one. Okay. Yeah. I said, so this is my window out. I told him, I said, this is me stepping down. You call a new bishop. I'm stepping down. Because he wouldn't oh my back down on that. He can't. <laughs> Church won't let that happen. He would we too. Have no I idea. believe he would. I believe he doesn't agree with it. He's a moral man. He's a good man. So did you feel kind of like your back was pushed up against the yeah, wall? Your like personal integrity. I was glad though, because it gave me a way out. Like Okay, well. Yeah. Anyways. That's it right there. Anyways, he said it all himself. Yeah. Okay, the last one, bro. This just gives you a little insight to this dude's mindset, okay? This dude's mindset. We're going to go to three hours and 24 minutes, even. Three hours and 24 minutes. When the going Again, gets tough, when the going gets tough, the cowards get going. For the, for the third time, I'm going to encourage every single one of you, and like Carden said, you can listen to it on double speed, and it sounds like it's single speed. Go listen to the whole thing. But okay. this, what is, time this is the last one we'll do. Three hours and 24 minutes. Mm-hmm. Three hours and 24 minutes right here, my man. Here we've got the crew. These oh, are the nine it's another commercial boo. Two, one, skip. Here we go. Hopes. If you can speak to them like hopes for the future or, you know. <clears throat> I actually wrote something about the future recently um i've got some notes here can i tell you yes yes and i'm gonna i'm gonna segue into that um when you step away from thinking your celestial material and everyone else around you who's not a mormon is not Mm -hmm. That that is a direct what refutation <laughs> let it play. of scripture. Started. Well, gosh, okay, play. that like they just rehearse these stupid tropes that are not Started. even real. Started. You're let it not play. brave, Nick. Let it play. Seriously, he wants to say, oh, one on one with you, I'm gonna toe to heel, recap, crunch, to arm said, bar you. When, when you don't think you're just so, way more celestial than everyone else, when you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Saints, mm -hmm. and then okay, so here we go. Yes, yes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna segue into that. Um, when you step away from thinking your celestial material and everyone else around you who's not a Mormon is not, mm -hmm. you see the beauty in the world. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So I can't take pain medicine, so I had to get my medical card to help with this surgery I had. And in this cannabis shop, this girl sitting here and she's got nose piercing. She's really pale, tattooed. And in the church, I would have just, I wouldn't have given her a second of my time. Mm. She wasn't celestial enough. Mm. I'm sorry. That's, what? That's, she wasn't uh, celestial enough? We're almost done. Let it play. That, that's just, that's a dick move. That's not a. What a dork. And in an instant, all of a sudden, she was so important to me. She needed to know that I was interested in who she was and that she was somebody to me. And what was interesting is because I had that paradigm shift, she wasn't giving me the time of day either. But all of a sudden, I asked how she was doing. 
what she liked, and everything changed. <laughs> so I've been doing this now with a neighbor, and my neighbor's like 600 yards away, but I called him the other day. I said, man, you've asked me to have a beer with you like a thousand times, and I just turned you down, and I didn't want anything to do with you because of that. I'd like to sit down and have a beer with you. <laughs> I want you to know that I've left a religion that was a high-demand religion that didn't allow me to connect with you. I told him this. And I know that sounds really weird and crazy, but I want you to know I'm not a bad guy. I'm a nice guy, and I want to be your friend. I called a man who left the church 12 years ago who was in our ward. I went to his home time after time trying right, to you can convert pause it. You can him pause back it. to Mormonism. Oh, Jackson! God bless you for clipping. <laughs> that was the God, best. Now you know why I'm telling you to watch the whole freaking thing. When, he, dude, oh my, there's so much to say about this. But <laughs> he was incapable of being a nice neighbor. <laughs> when when he said, well, "I just came from a high demand religion that didn't allow me to connect with you." Bro, you've got personal issues. If you can't be friends with someone that says, hey, you want to have a beer with me? Be like, oh, yeah, I don't drink, but I'd love to hang out with you. Crazy, right? He said you asked it, he asked you a thousand times to do this. And uh, <laughs> yes, Brother Nick is only calling himself out. Somebody in the chat. He's only calling himself out. That's exactly right. This whole he thing is way more celestial than Franco. anyone with tattoos and piercings. And so he couldn't he couldn't associate with the chick at the cannabis freaking shop there, I'm, wait i'm gonna see if i can find a clip to send you real quick because he just did the meme there's a meme he don't really he doesn't realize that he just did and they never refute scripture they only fulfill it and they never violate the negative stereotypes they only fulfill them and yes! i i'm sorry like on my mission <laughs> on i do i live in los angeles bro like <laughs> <laughs> like, do you think I'm just walking around litmus testing everybody to make sure that they have my same religious views? Like, dog, your head would explode. Like, bro, bro, half of my buddies are freaking. You're a run, marine, like dirty marines, bro. That all they do is cuss and smoke and freaking drink. And okay. I, I love hanging out with these guys. Okay. Carl, I just sent and you I a video love, on YouTube. I, I, and I, I love you calling them up because he just did. A TikTok meme, and doesn't realize he did the TikTok meme. Now, did you send it in Discord, my man? Yeah, man? you sent it in Discord. Okay, the, the I want to see it. I want to see it. So, okay. Oh, hey, oh, oh my gosh, Jackson, oh my gosh, it's bless always, you. It's bless you for that clip. That was oh, that was the cherry on top of the whole thing. I'm so glad you didn't start with that. That was so good. Okay, so here is a clip. Uh, it's 37 minutes long though, Quaku. Are you sure? What? The clip, minutes. sunny clips that still made me laugh on the 20th rewatch. 37 minutes? What are you talking about? It's like 32 seconds. Okay, then um, the link you sent me, uh, hold on a second, I'm going to redo that. Uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia feelings. Here we go. Okay. Okay, here we go, my man. Sorry, it, it went to a different, uh, always okay. sunny in Philadelphia. Wait a second, wait a second. Dennis, you're married? Yes, man, I'm married. I'm a married man. <laughs> yeah, she's actually here, dude. It's awesome. She's in the bathroom. She's brushing her teeth. Yeah, she must have eaten something a little bit sinister. It must have been the Funyuns or something. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway, the point is, I am having, this is crazy, but I'm having feelings again. It, like, like some kind of 14-year-old kid or something. I mean, you remember feelings, right? Yeah. I have feelings every single day of my life. Do you? Are you saying you don't have feelings? <laughs> well, I'm saying I built up a shell. A shell around that, myself. That, a, that, a that's cold, the meme. calculated, like, heartless like, shell. Like, uh -huh, He's discovering okay. friendliness, <laughs> yeah. and we're like, are, you, you didn't just do that, like, <laughs> like it's not like it's a thing you did as like a normal guy. Like you had to <laughs> discover feelings and friendliness. Till and look, this is why I say religion is not for everybody. Some people religion makes better, and because of a combination of other things, some people personality types religion stops you from maybe. But I'm taught as a member of the church. That everyone's a child of God with infinite value and infinite and eternal potential. Okay? That's what I'm taught. And I don't know how, as a member of the church, you replace that with, oh, look at all these disgusting pagans. Yes! Not so much yes! Me. I'm not going to talk to them. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't see how <laughs> that could be your thought process. You know, hey, like, I, 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 I'm only laughing. Look, going back to what he was saying, we're not making fun of him. 
we're making fun of this idea. This idea is ludicrous. Ludicrous. Like, Luda. Like, yeah, seriously. It's, it's, it's and, out there, and man. It's... For him to tout this out, I've said that word tout so many times. It's because I wrote it in my freaking notes. I'm looking at it. But to, like, display this as, like, a common ideology in the church and something that is taught almost through, like, church doctrine and stuff, and it's a byproduct of the values of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, it is the complete opposite, bro. You just expose yourself of thinking that you are better than people before because, you know, whatever you... Oh, dude, it, that's why I'm laughing. The idea. Nick... If you're watching this, bro, we're not making fun of you. We we would actually love to talk to you. But uh yeah, I that is a boring. hilarious idea. I just think it'd be boring. It's just this is the most this is the most predictable, like all the rules of anti Mormonism that you have, Cardin, this would just be going down the list. There's nothing yeah, sure. interesting, also, there's nothing unique. I don't know if it happened this way, but I'm just imagining his neighbors outside doing farm work and gets a text. You may not understand, but I've been dodging your beer hangouts because I was a part of a cult that told me you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> hey, by the way, if, if I, I guess it, you know, maybe that'll be part of our like anti-Mormon ex-Mormon rehab program, like teaching people how to have fun and just have friends, you know, go for it. Dude. Okay. I just want to respond to one comment from Paul Hadlow. Uh, he says, I'm a net. Oh, no, no. From Diebel. He says, I'm a nevermo, but a high demand religion sounds like torture. Guess what? It is for a lot of people because they don't want to follow Jesus Christ. If you read the words of Jesus Christ, he said, let the dead bury the dead and come and follow me. He said, he who loves his mother, father, sister, brother, wife more than me is not worthy of me. He is, he is telling us to leave everything behind and follow him. It's not a high demand religion. It's called following Jesus Christ and being a disciple of Jesus Christ. That buzzword pisses me off because it, it just negates everything that Jesus Christ ever preached. Well, also, um, I'll actually push back on you because I think that you're accepting it as an actual real terminology. I call BS on the terminology altogether because, frankly, I think... The LDS church and success therein is really no different than success in any other societal or organized body. If you want to get back in shape and you want to, you know, uh, lose weight and you want to be ripped just like Jackson, guess what you're going to be doing? Probably every other day you're going to be going to the gym. You're probably going to be restricting your caloric intake, which sucks on days when there's pizza in the office. And it sucks on days when your birthday cake has triple stacked double fudge and you really want it. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to do some minor dietary restrictions. You're going to have to probably go to your church. I mean, I'm sorry, your gym two or three times a week. And you might have to check in with an accountability coach or an app online. Or maybe as you're jogging on the cardio machine, listen to some pump up things like kind of like scriptures, you know. And in our church, what what is our high demand? You know, do your best to wait until you're married. Why? Because there's many practical benefits that have been proven in both science and spirituality to give longevity to your future family and a more stable household for your kids. What else should you do? Well, you should read the scriptures. Why? Because they're full of all kinds of wisdom. And the more you can get, the better. It's kind of like a suitcase. You only take out what you put in. Oh, and, and by the way, you know, um, there's gym memberships. You might have to pay a few bones here. There's some tithing. You know, you might have to pay some cash there. And, you know, you're going to get a lot out of it, though. Besides being high demand, which it's not. It's like, to me, just regular demand, you know. You get a lot out of it. It's high yield. You get 30 times out of it what you put into it. And for that, I am grateful. This idea of high yield religion is another vagary that has absolutely zero definition and is nothing compared to the high demand religion of atheism, nihilism, and chaos that all of this destruction turns into. You want to know a high demand dragon out there? Self-doubt consumerism consumerism is never satisfied vanity is never satisfied you want to talk high demand the american war machine and the american marketing machine are the two biggest dragons not spoken about in the freaking book of revelation and they will consume every ounce of your wallet your paycheck your family you you, you think you want to high demand addiction here he is bragging about being able to booze it up with his buddies now you know what i'm saying and it's like yeah, a, a addiction. Right, Carter, I'm going to stop you there because okay. if you don't take a break, we will no, see you pass out don't live. Don't stop. Okay? No, this okay. is great. What are you stopping him okay, for? Okay, people are gold. saying we're making fun of him now. 
No, we're not making fun we're, of them. We're saying the we're claim not. is bogus. And this is the their brain-damaged niceness culture, false idolatry that thinks the second you say, no, 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 uh, no, that's not right. What you said is not right. Why are you attacking me? No, I'm attacking what you just said, and I'm proving it wrong. Yes, the idea is what we are making fun of. The idea, okay? So in summary, why would you want to be a part of a low-demand Anything. Yes. Anything. Yeah. Anything. 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 Nobody oh, brags dude. about being in the freaking, you know, uh, nobody brags about being, uh, you're a Marine, bro. Nobody brags about, you know, low. oh, no, I'm in the low demand branch in, of the I military. Was the Coast Guard. I was in the Coast Guard in World War II. Wait, well, what? my grandpa was in the Coast Guard in World War II. And by the way, those some people, of those, were, hey, some of those they were pretty PA, pretty actually. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, so well, here's the deal. With everything in life, you get out what you put in. Are we a high demand religion? I'd say abs of freaking lootly we are. And that's why we get so much. No, you're out. a high demand person, so you put into it more than the average bear, and you get more out of it. There's plenty of regular laymen who show up on Sunday, never read their scriptures, listen to their chicken noodle soup of the soul, and then go home. We are not an anything demand religion. We are just a religion that has a code of ethics that you can choose to obey or not obey. And if you obey, obey right. them hard, then you get hard blessings. If you obey them soft, you get soft blessings. It's that simple. <laughs> All right. Okay. We're almost at three hours, guys. Yeah, we got a jam. Oh, yeah. So anyway, um, good. final thoughts. Quaku, you go first. You go first. Final thoughts. Look, final thoughts is like he's a guy trying to figure out. He doesn't believe it. So he left. Dude, if you don't believe it, you shouldn't stay. That's what I say. If you don't believe a thing, why go to a thing and say you believe just it? Just don't lie about us when you rage quit. Yeah, I mean, just like, like, and I get that, you know, when you have, when you lose friends, sometimes you leave a church, you have to, you get new friends, and ex-Mormons will make great friends at first. And I say that ex-Mormons, TM, like the, the kind that's marketed online. But I do think some of the stuff he said, it, it riddled me with a little bit of sales bro kind of tactics. But ultimately, he's trying to figure out life. It's whatever. I don't think he's going to become some expo megastar. I don't think that's what he wants. I think he just wants to hang out with his wife and kids. My only suggestion, make sure your son gets off the video games. You don't want one of those college boys that's always on the... Ooh, on the, savage, you know. savage. It's not really okay. savage. It's like, you know what? I'm anti-video game. That's all I'm going to say to you, Nick. That's all I'm going to yeah, say. I'm, I'm anti-video game, too. Only because I was instilled in me by my mother. And I didn't get to play him, so I'm just jealous of people that did. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, Jonah. Jonah and Jackson, what do you guys think, man? So I'd say that... De so if the... if Mississippi Nick decides to listen to any of this that deconstruction that you put yourself through that sausage grinder that you put yourself through do you hope your teenage boys go through that do you want your little girls to go through that no you want them to be grown first okay and then maybe if you want to poison them and tell them that the church is evil and spit out all the lies that you said fine but in the meantime don't do this don't put this on your children just yet let them let them like you can share it with your wife you should have listened to your wife by the way when she told you to knock this crap off but spare your children this give them a few years to just grow up normally okay they don't they don't want to be youtube celebrities or reddit celebrities they just want to have a normal life and they need some kind of a foundation i just worry about these guys kids um so just you can do this in secret or you can do this you know, when you're older or whatever, but right now, like, I just worry about those children having everything ripped out from underneath them, and, you know, that's all. Yeah. Boring. Boring. I've heard the story a thousand times. Mormon Insinuations, episode 5 billion, where some guy rewrites his memory to make it sound like he left for philosophical reasons when he just wanted to taste beer. No, I yeah. shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, so say it, say it, Jackson. Hit, hit your piece, man. Brother Nick, brother Nick, brother Nick, we love you, bro. We love you so much that we felt the need to spend the last three hours talking about everything that you you brought up in this in this interview. OK, the ideas put forth is what we have issue with. And that is the only thing we took issue with this evening to everyone watching. Go watch the whole entire uh, interview. And dare I say. I personally watch every single Mormon stories interview because it strengthens the farts out of my faith when I can <laughs> look at this and see and discern light between darkness so freaking easily, bro. I love it. I love it. When you and there's several parts where he advocates for masturbation and pornography. When you are defending pornography ahead of Jesus Christ, that's when I'm like, 
bro, tell me what else you have to to say because I know <laughs> that it's gonna be tainted. And uh, dude, yeah. Anyways. Okay, um, last two Super Chats. J-Dub says, Every fast Sunday, tens of thousands of bishops reaffirm their faith and bear authentic testimony over the pulpit. Where are those video leaks? Let's go. You know what? Send us the best testimony on the Discord, and we're going to actually show some authentic, awesome testimony. Must be less than two minutes. Keep it to 90 seconds or less. Give us a, give us a super cut, okay? We actually, we actually have a testimony meeting channel on our Discord filled yes. with testimonies from members. Okay, um, let me see. He went through the marshes, but never truly uncovered. Did we already read that one? Confusing acceptance for worth and love is the root of all this. Nothing doctrinal in this fall. And then uh, let me see. There's another one. Uh, oh, shoot. No, we already read those a long time ago. Oh, my gosh. I messed those up. Torvik Aus says, did he read any of the Gospels like any of them? Yeah, there's a lot of codified scripture that refutes a lot of these claims. And then Jacob Garner is complaining. Uh, we're not making fun of you. Proceeds to laugh and make fun of a uh, person repeatedly. You guys are truly the epitome of why there can be no real dialogue. Oh, that's just making fun of the idea. Now, have we made, the idea. Now, have we made fun of the guy? Like, not, I don't the understand. Idea. That's the, yeah, the, have we? These people the always idea. say they want to have dialogue and then never show up. Dialogue is just they want to be able to complain at you and you have to listen to them because as Thomas Sowell said, some people in this country have gotten so accustomed to preferential treatment that when you give them regular treatment like everyone else, they call it persecution. The woke scolds have pushed the boomers for 40 years, farther and farther to the left politically, farther and farther into the woke camp uh, uh, sociologically, and they've been so, so treated with kid gloves and told, well, we'll agree to disagree. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, we're horrible bad people that are Islamophobic, homophobic, and, and, and you know, misogynistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you promise just not to leave, you promise not No. No, enough of this. We're done with you lying about us. You've called us a cult. You've called us brainwashed. And then you want to play the victim that does not fly. But the problem is that all of the anti-Mormons have gotten so used to 40 years of little pats on the head and green jello slivers getting delivered to their door after they say something heinous and horrible that they somehow think that they're on the right. And the second somebody on our show says, ah, now nah, I call BS on your statement. In fact, we're going to analyze your statement and show you facts, logic, and figures that disprove your statement. They say, why are you attacking me? And I'm sorry, no. Debunking your BS, Nick from Mississippi, is not an attack on you. It's a debunking of your BS and the tropes that you are rehearsing about me and my faith and my friends that you have indicted as something they are not. And if you've been so coddled by wokeism and coddled by your self-belief that by picking up this banner of woke talking points that are really no different than anti-Jewish and anti-Semitic tropes at this point by how they're rehearsed, if the things you guys say about Mormons were said about Jews, you would be called anti-Semites. But because it's Mormons and you're familiar with them, it gets swept under the rug. But no, there's a whole new generation of people that have said, my entire adult life I've been forced to agree with somebody's psychosis and or cruelty in order to be called a good person you no longer can hold my humanity hostage I will debunk your lies in real time and they're so not used to it they're so used to being coddled that the second they get a little bit of ethical pushback the second they get a little bit of a challenge they melt like the snowflakes that they are. So, you know what? Fine. Nick, bruh, come at me with your, what we say it isn't, a toe hold, an arm bar. <laughs> you know, get new name Noah out here. You know, after new name Noah, Noah is done threatening Dallin H. Oaks, you can come over and threaten me with your big fat toes or whatever you want to do with them. You Wait, know? Hold up. Kwaku, Kwaku never gave us his direct message he had for John DeLynn. I oh, you know that. what? Unfortunately, he actually just had to go to the bathroom. So he actually just jumped out the back door. You just outed my friend. He literally just had to go to the bathroom right there, and he gave me the high sign. So I was covering for him. So mm -hmm. anyway, we're ending it here anyway. There's no direct message other than this. I will give you the floor to say what you want to say, Nick, on this show. I'll fly Glory. you out, and you can sit right there, and you can talk, and you can tell me 
all about Joseph Smith polygamy that you said you were lied to, even though I remember talking about this as a freshman in high school with Sister Holiday. Okay, but you could tell me how it was hidden from you and you've discovered the secret gnosis, okay? But you will receive pushback. You will receive pushback. And if this frightens you, if this um, makes you feel uncomfortable, I will say welcome to the real world where people's ideas get challenged and you have to work through them. You're not special anymore anywhere else other than ex-Mormon subreddit because you're a rock star right now who's rehearsing their tropes that are based in hatred of the LDS church, not in reality of either what happened historically or what the science says. So if you want to have a scientific, fact-based conversation, we will gladly do that, okay? If you want to rehearse tropes, you will be challenged just as... A rabbi might challenge a neo-Nazi for rehearsing anti-Semitic tropes. And if that's difficult for you, I'm sorry. And it, and it will be. And it will be. I'm everybody sorry. Here, everybody here should also remember that you can only ever get one side of the story. Yeah. Because the stake president's not going to come on. All those youth aren't going to come on. He's the only one who has zero scruples about spilling everyone else's beans all over the internet. And all the other people involved have too much integrity to do it, and so they stay quiet. So all we're ever going to get is this guy's one-sided story, and all they are are stories. They're just stories, unlike the Stick of Joseph YouTube channel. You can go there and hear facts and figures and historical evidences for the Book of Mormon. So make sure yeah. all of you are subscribed to the Stick of Joseph YouTube channel. Yeah, with that said. Great transition, bro. God bless. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So with that said, it's been real and it's been fun and it's been real fun. For this and more, please make sure you check us out at wardradio.com where there is indeed a link to the Discord. We'd love to continue the conversation there. Is it not fun, Jackson? Is the Discord not a fun place? It's a good It's a good fun it's place. It's a good place. I like Quaku's Corner. Quaku's Corner is live and active. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's There's Blindly. also a prayer roll that we have introduced for people that have uh, struggles, struggles. I am a firm believer that the prayer of the faithful totally helps out, helped my daughter when she had cancer in the hospital. I know that miracles happen because of the prayer of the faithful. We actually have just introduced a prayer, prayer roll that was Jonah Barnes' idea, I believe. And you know what? To all you anti-Mormons out there, you're welcome to show up and have respectful dialogue. But we got moderators that get rid of all of the bad pictures you like posting. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to keep the swearing down just a little bit. The guys that Classy. come in and just start saying F, 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 and then post pictures of cups of coffee. There's 15 other anti-Mormon, ex-Mormons that have tried to do that. You're not funny, you know. And um, if, you're, if you want to just chat with us, though, we love hanging out there, and uh, we'll be there for that. So anyway, as we said before, it's been real. It's been fun. And it's been real fun, uh, as we said before. Check us out at 